first place on the line this weekend here in Cincinnati. The Reds playing host to the Cardinals. Cincinnati a game above the 500 mark. The Cardinals at 43 and 38. And with that record coupled with the Milwaukee loss this afternoon, the Cardinals are in sole possession in the NL Central of first place. Al Roboski, Dan McLaughlin, and welcome to Cardinals Baseball. No surprise to Major League Baseball handing out the Player of the Month award, and it goes to Cardinals first baseman Albert Pujols, and what a month it was. Uh, it was a record-setting month for Albert Pujols. You also see B.J. Upton wins the award, the Tampa Bay outfielder for the American League. But Albert's great numbers, the 14 home runs ties, a single-month record high, and the 35 RBIs sets a new single-month record for RBIs for Albert. Quite a month. All right, he's in the lineup tonight when we come back we'll talk about the pitching matchup here in Cincinnati Homer Bailey of the Cincinnati Reds getting the start and for the Cardinals Joel Pinheiro a pair of writings the Reds the Cardinals first place on the line in the central this weekend fans making their way inside the great American ballpark it's game one of this three game series a holiday weekend in Cincinnati for the St. Louis Cardinals and a look at the pitching matchup here tonight. A pair of right-handers. Joel Pinheiro gets the start for St. Louis. Well, let's hope he has that ground ball working again tonight. He is a sinker ball pitcher. When he gets his ground balls, he is going to be highly successful, particularly if he gets a little run support. Yeah, last couple of years, we've heard an awful lot about the right-hander for the Cincinnati Reds. Homer Bailey still trying to figure things out, and he even has incorporated the split-fingered fastball here lately. Well, he primarily is a fastball pitcher. He's a young pitcher. Pitcher. He's had very little success against the Cardinals 0 and 2 ERA over 14. Also a young player making a name for himself in Cincinnati Joey Votto. We'll talk about before and after and the Votto difference from the time he was on the DL. Dusty Baker has Joey Votto in the lineup tonight. Game one of this three game series. He was on the disabled list for a brief time before he was on the DL. Hit 357, eight home runs, 33 RBIs in 38 games. After his stint on the DL, nine games, already six RBIs, and a game winning RBI yesterday, Al. Late in the ball game, a walk off base hit from him as he gets this hit to win the ball game. And look at how excited his teammates are. They tell me that he is the real leader of this ball club, both in and off the field. This guy is something special. So Votto in the lineup tonight for Dusty Baker. Cardinals and Reds coming up from the Great American Ballpark. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Bud Light Lime. With just the right taste, it never fills you up. The difference is drinkability. By Steak and Shake, famous for steak burgers. By Auto Tire, for the lowest prices in town, we shop the competitors so you don't have to. And by Chevy, see your Mid-America Chevy dealers or shop and compare at stlchevy.com. Great American ballpark, and it is a perfect night for baseball. Temperatures unseasonably cool here in the Midwest and right here in Cincinnati, Ohio. Tony La Russa and Dusty Baker facing off now for the 160th time in their managerial careers. Dusty and Tony, and there's a look at Joel Pinheiro, the starter for the Cardinals tonight. And a look at Tony La Russa's lineup, which does not include Colby Rasmus here this evening. Skip Schumacher, the second baseman, leads it off, followed by the left fielder, Chris Duncan. Albert Pujols at first base. Ryan Ludwig in right field. Rick Ankiel in center field. Yadier Molina is the catcher. Joe Thurston once again over third. The pitcher batting eighth, Joel Pinheiro. And the shortstop tonight, Brendan Ryan, who's hitting 298. And the Cardinals face Homer Bailey. Bailey out of LaGrange, Texas. And he was selected by the Reds first round and seventh overall back in 2004. And we talk about potential. This guy's got a ton of it. He's our Marshall Wireless starter. Well, he just turned 23 in early May. And this is his, going to be his third start of the year. It's his second start since being recalled for the second time. And he really has struggled against the Cardinals. 0-2 with an ERA over 14. And he has also struggled with control. In nine plus innings, he's walked 13. A look at the defense. Big strong arm and right of Jay Bruce. 10 outfield assist, which leads the National League. Harrison Jr., Yanish Phillips, the gold glove winner at second base a year ago. Votto, good to see him back 
Over at first base, Homer Bailey and Ramon Hernandez, the battery tonight in the auto tire defense. Nice crowd here in Cincinnati. Here are the Reds. They haven't played all that well here at home, 19 and 18 at the Great American Ballpark. And overall, a game above 500 at 39 and 38. No one, though, running away with this division. And as I said before, first place on the line. Oh, that's right. And you know, you could go 0 for 10 on this road trip, and and you still wouldn't be that far back. But I think the Cardinals are designed to have a winning trip and maybe put a little separation between them and the other contenders. It's a 10 day 10 game road trip. It's the longest road trip of the year in terms of games because of the doubleheader right before the all star break the day night doubleheader at Wrigley Field after 81 games last year and this is game number 82 for the Cardinals tonight. After 81 games last year the club was 45 and 36 so a little better record a season ago. Domino's first pitch of the game is taken. A little bit low by Skip Schumacher. Schumacher is hitting 293 with three home runs and 22 RBIs. I don't think you have to tell anybody in that Cardinal dugout or Cincinnati's how important this series is. The next pitch by Homer Bailey is a strike to Schumacher. Our first pitch at 712 Eastern Time. And how about this temperature in Cincinnati? 78 degrees. That's just beautiful weather. It just hope it uh, stays dry this weekend. 1-1 one, one pitch. And that's tapped foul by Schumacher. Not a lot of the uh, Cardinals during the seven games at home at Bush Stadium put up very good numbers offensively on the homestand. Pujols did. Ludwig was a little bit better. But outside of that, not many bright spots as Schumacher was 6 for 26 on the homestand and hit 231. Playing second base for the 64th time this season here tonight. The one two pitch is slept foul and out of play. Bring up a good point Dan because on the homestand the Cardinals were three and four with just a, a team batting average of 217. So this offense continues to struggle at times but they've had good numbers against Bailey and they think they're going to get a lot of fastballs. You've got to be ready for it. Here's a one two pitch by Bailey off speed pitch taken up and away. Bailey was with the big club then he was sent down. And when he went down folks he went five and zero oh with a point eight ERA. We can't keep him down there and then no. all of a sudden when he comes back up he starts walking people right. again. You know two starts ago he walked six the last start career high seven and Schumacher rips it for a base hit into right field. And that's why I sit there and I just look at these minor league numbers and they really don't mean anything how when, when guys have got his success at the minor leagues it doesn't translate into success here. Ricky and I were talking about this and I'm saying Ricky Horton on the uh, the bus and, and I know you and I have talked about it, and I brought up the point you made Al is that you know the difference now between Triple A and the major league level is enormous. I remember uh, Kyle Davies Cardinals hit him so well that they sent him to Triple A and then it seemed like one of his first starts was against Memphis and he you know he, he shuts them out and gets uh, double digits and strikeouts. I don't know if you agree with this but to me Colby Rasmus along with Ludwig need to play every day in my mind exactly right because Duncan right now is in between he's late on the fastball and ahead on the breaking ball. Here's a 1 0 pitch to Duncan with a runner at first base. Take it outside Colby Rasmus among the rookies right now in the National League as you see the numbers on Duncan he's first in home runs RBI's hits multi hit games and extra base hits so if the voting for the rookie of the year was done right now you have to figure that Colby Rasmus would be at the top of that list. You're right and on the homestand he hit 333 in the Giants series with their good pitching 455 mm. 2 0 pitch Duncan pops it up left side and out of play. What they're trying to do with Duncan as I said he's in between. So the one thing they have said is you've got to be ready for fastballs. If they're going to throw. You know three outstanding breaking balls so be it. But particularly until you got two strikes just be ready to hit the first fastball. And he's been his mind has been you know in between also as he's taken a lot of fastballs for strikes. A 2 1 pitch. And there's a look at Hal McRae the Cardinals hitting coach. How much you can do when you run into Liriano and Kane and Lincecum and Randy Johnson was good that night. Minnesota pitched well in the series against the Cardinals. 
Here's a 2-1. Two, 2-2. Two two. Another name that will be brought up for Rookie of the Year, no doubt. The Atlanta Fireballer, the rookie of Tommy Hansen. He'll get some of that consideration, too, with a strong second half. And he's done a lot of that damage since uh, we've been there. That's you know, right. He was, he was down in the Meyer Leagues when we visited Dixie. And he's the reason that Tom Glavin was not right. activated and brought up. And I think they made the right choice, didn't they? Oh, yeah. Inside, and it's now kind of three balls, two strikes. So if you're Homer Bailey here, you've got to throw a strike. You've got pool holes on deck. And if you're Chris Duncan, you can be selective and expect that you're going to get the fastball. You see he's been better on the road at 292. Get a pitch to hammer right here. Well, remember, too, he's been walking a lot of people, so you'd think it'd be a fastball. You already got a man on. You're trying to get your first out of the game, and your best pitch is a fastball. He's been working a lot lately with that split finger pitch. First time through the order, he uses that as a strikeout pitch. But, you know, is this the curveball or is this the splitter? We'll have to find out. 3 2 pitch. And Duncan walks in. Here comes Albert Pools. That is the last thing that he wanted to do. See, in my mind, you're not doing a young pitcher a favor. A lot of times when you get the three two pitch, you're going to see a breaking ball with nobody on base. But when you got a young guy that's struggling throwing strikes and you know, you've got to give him the pitch that is the best chance to throw a strike to, and hope for the best, you know, line drive, double play, hope for a strikeout, do something like this. But don't give in to a secondary pitch, especially right off the bat. And it could be a difference in the game now when you bring Pujols to the plate with two runners on. Yeah, and now you're really very difficult to pitch around him. Albert on the home stand was nine for 19 with four home runs. First pitch to Pujols is taken for a strike. Albert with tremendous numbers in his career against Cincinnati, a 363 hitter, 37 home runs, 109 driven in, and that's just against the Cincinnati Reds. And that's just at 503 at bats. It's amazing. <laughs> so not quite a full year. Two runners on and an 0-1 pitch to Pools. Strike two. Homer Bailey, and we mentioned that he is now using that split finger pitch. He learned it from Justin Lair. You might remember that name. He was up briefly with the A's and Brewers. He's an International League All-Star. And Bailey, you see 0-2 against the Cardinals. Learned that pitch when he went down to go 5 and 0, but he had to get permission from Walt Jockety and the coaching staff here to learn the pitch and throw it in game situations. Pujols spoils that pitch, hits it out of play. A 95 mile an hour fastball that he spotted well there against Albert. Why would you be, not be afraid to throw that on, with Duncan? Especially, especially early in, in a game when you want to establish the fastball. The next time. Then you can, you know, then you can mix things up, but get command of your fastball early. And Al, they said in Cleveland he was being clocked at 95 to 98. So he was hitting 98 sometimes on that gun. 0 2 pitch to Albert. Tapped foul, stays nothing in two. Pujols starts play tonight, fourth in average. Hanley Ramirez is at 348, Albert at 335. David Wright, Carlos Beltran of the Mets just in front of Pujols. He is first in home runs with 30 and the first in RBIs with 77. Prince Fielder two behind Pujols in that RBI department. Gonzalez is now six behind in the home run department. Tied him up and struck him out. I'm not sure what Pujols is saying to the home plate umpire here. Did he try to call time? Well, he could try, but you have to be granted. And now Tony wants a clarification. Ball just running in on him. You know, he's kind of set up away. And, you know, the only thing you could say is maybe he was calling time, but it didn't look like his mouth was moving. It's a pretty good trick. So he gets uh, the strikeout, his first of the night. And it brings in Ryan Ludwig, who has had good success against Bailey, three for five with a couple of doubles against this right-hander. And Ludwig really starting to come into his own. You know, he, after disabled list, I think he made the wrong choice, not going on a rehab for a few days. Elected to just take bang practice and start out, but he was really timing off. But now he's starting at 300 on the on the homestand and a great series. 
including last night a couple RBIs. But he would hit 350 against the Giants. So it's starting to show some protection for Albert. A clarification I'm sure the home plate umpire is saying look that's fielding Colbreth behind the plate. Runners go and the pitch is hit in the air. Out to right center field of course the ball carries so well here and the catch is made by Jay Bruce. Tavares was there as well but I was about to say with Pools, you could see him verbally trying to call time but never put his hand up to the umpire to indicate that he was looking for time never granted and he strikes out right. You can complain all you want you can ask for permission but you know you talked about Jay Bruce and his 10 assists. So he has a much stronger throwing arm than Tavares. Thirty third start in center field tonight for Ricky and Keel. And Keel hits it down the right field line and pulls it foul. So go back to the uh, pool holes at bat here. Trying to call time. Yeah there you can see it. But even then it, it seemed to be late in the at bat to try to do that and, with that pitch. And we always talk about you got to protect these pitchers and and you know you can't grant time when the guy's right in the middle of the windup. No so question. It, it's a it's a judgment call and it went against Albert. Here's the 0 1 to Rick and Keel. That's the pitch you got to be ready for right there. Out in front on a breaking ball. And then the fastball you don't want to take fastballs in the strike zone against this guy. He's predominantly a fastball pitcher trying to mix things up. But still you're going to get your share of fastballs for strikes. Cardinals against the Reds this season are three and four. They were ten and five last year. Oh two pitch a strike out of Van Keel two in the inning. Cardinals got the first two on and couldn't cash in. Pinero to the mound and we come back. Dusty Baker has gotten the best of Tony La Russa by one game in the history between these two San Francisco Chicago St. Louis 80 and 79 Dusty's record against Tony La Russa. Overall his team is hitting 249 Chris Dickerson the left fielder Willie Tavares their center fielder with 15 steals Joey Votto back in the lineup and putting up big numbers Brandon Phillips the cleanup man Jay Bruce power numbers good average down. Ramon Hernandez at 254, Jerry Hairston Jr., Paul Yanish, and Homer Bailey. They'll face Joel Pinheiro. He'll get the start for the St. Louis Cardinals. Pinheiro on the season, six and nine, and he's our Marshall Wireless starter for the Cardinals. Making his career 200 start here tonight. And when he's on, it's going to be a ground ball monster. But, you know, in his last. Uh, in, Last five starts, he's allowed three runs or less, but he's gone one and four. Very little run support. He's only allowed one home run since May 2nd. Seven of his last 12 starts, he's not walked a batter, so he's doing everything to help himself win, but needs a little run support. Three and one in his career with a 2.97 ERA against Cincinnati. That's ripped into the corner by Chris Dickerson, and he can run. On his way to second base, turns it up, and he'll stop at second base. Tell you what, it looked like he took for granted it was going to be a double and then saw that Ludwig had a little trouble getting it out of the corner. Watch him as he rounds first base. If he didn't hesitate, just maybe a little bit right there. Yeah. Then he picks it up. You're right, You're right about that. But it's, it's one of those tough calls. You know, the last thing you want to do is make the first out at third base. So, you know, you're in scoring position, but we would prefer to see all guys hustle out of the box and continue to hustle and let that third base coach help you make that decision if you need so. Firestone leaderboard at the top of your screen. Here's Willie Tavares and now rookie run leaders. Rasmus at 34 second best. Tavares can bunt for a hit. Thurston bare hands throws it away. One nothing Cincinnati as that goes down the right field line. The speed of Tavares and Thurston threw it away. May have had a little bit more time than he thought but with the speed of Tavares he felt he had to get rid of it quickly and he was playing in for that bunt so it's one nothing Reds and an error the tenth of the season against Joe Thurston. You see him in there he comes in here and bare hands it throws off balance and just sails on him over the head of Albert and not a good start. 
Thurston really struggling offensively can ill afford to have problems defensively and he leaves the t team with those 10 errors. So it's a base hit and an E5 on the play. No RBI on the play. Here's Votto. And he taps it foul. Joey Votto from Toronto. And the Reds were in interleague play when he came off the disabled list for his anxiety disorder. And he revealed to the media that when his father passed away, and he was barely 50, I believe, when he passed away, he took on the responsibility, being the oldest of four children, and felt the weight of the world on his shoulders, had problems sleeping, stress, High fly ball into right. Tavares will tag up from third base. The throw by Ludwig is strong, and he got him. A tremendous throw. Ludwig from right field to the bag at third. Well, we know that Luddy's got a good throwing arm, but really, most of the time it's accurate, and this time it needed to be with Tavares' speed. That was a big pick me up after a little shaky start. Normally you don't see two balls hit in the air off of Pinheiro to about seventh or eighth inning. But here a pick me up as they get the double play. Thurston gets a short hop, drops the tag down, and Tavares to tag it up. You know, he's got great speed, so this is probably something they just thought was going to be routine that he'd get over there. And here's a fly ball into right, backing up Ludwig in front of the track to make the catch. What a throw from Ryan Ludwig in right. One nothing Reds. Pitching matchup is our Toyota keys to the game and what really stands out about these two pitchers lack of innings for Homer Bailey and all the walks with 13 and nine and a third and you see the lack of walks by Pinheiro his control has been very good this season. It really has Pinheiro is has the best command of any pitcher in the National League he walks one point oh nine walks per nine innings and he has walked twelve and Bailey in nine and a third innings, well, 10 now in a third innings. He's walked uh, 13. Here's Yadier Molina. First pitch lifted into left center. Tavares over to make the catch in the first out. The Cardinals starting staff has collected 33 wins this season. That's that's good. Second most in the National League, Colorado at 34, and tied for third in the majors. But Dave Duncan on the flip side has seen that they are also tied for second with the most losses. In the National League at 31. And Dave also can tell you that his pitching staff as a whole has been very stingy. They've walked the fewest in the National League. Here's Thurston. Mark DeRosa, we understand, would be available possibly for defense or pinch running, but not swinging a bat. And that's unfortunate because his numbers against the Reds in his career are some of the best in baseball. And he's going to be a big lift when he does come back. And You know the conservative approach would be to have him start after the off day Monday in Milwaukee. But uh, you know usually when you get a quarter zone shot which he did it takes three days before you really say you can play but that's tomorrow. First and lost the bat it's popped up and out of play or, or this is the third day and he's hopeful that uh, the training staff will give him permission to start swinging the bat a little bit you know, as early as tomorrow. Mark DeRosa, 50 games against the Reds. Here's what I was talking about. 367 average with seven home runs and 33 RBIs. He really fits in well with this ball club. And you know, it's almost like he's been around for quite a while. He's a he's a leader in the clubhouse and get the feeling he would have fit in anywhere. Yeah. He's that kind of guy, that kind of player. Yeah, really very classy and been around a long time. And you know, everybody knows he, who he is and they recognize what he can do to help this ball club. I know the Reds and the Giants and talking with some of their folks very frustrated the Cardinals were able to get DeRosa before those two teams had a chance to get him and the offers were made but it didn't match up to the Cardinals offer. I'll be really interested to see who uh, the player to be named later is and by all accounts in that list it looks like it could be a pretty good prospect. But if you sign DeRosa or he helps yeah. you get into postseason play it's worth it. There's no doubt about it and I know Walt Jockney kind of felt like his offer was better than the Cardinals. But Cleveland was the one that was making the decision. And you had a chance to visit with Walt before the game. I was talking with Walt and I asked him about the the young Dominican player. 
And he said, you know, we had very little on him. He said, there's a couple clubs that are very strong and they're scouting in, in the Dominican. And he said, I'm, I'm going to inquire with them and see what their thoughts were. And he said that they signed a big kid out of the Dominican last year. He said, we didn't go quite that high. We, kid is about 6'6", six, six, another 16-year-old that he gave about $2 million to, but, you know, he hasn't... Uh, he hasn't had, you know, a lot of success. He's been, you know, been hurt. He had knee surgery and hadn't played a lot. Joe Thurston, high fly ball into right. Bruce back at the wall. He's got it. I mean, that is a routine fly ball. At yeah. this ballpark, it makes it so interesting because that could carry out of here. And I would have to believe that if it was normal July weather here. That's gone. It's, you know, halfway up the stands, you know, with the. 10 15 degrees warmer. Here's Pinheiro who's hitting 172. No home runs, one RBI. Kyle Loge, his rehab start went very well at Springfield last night. Four and two thirds, gave up three hits, gave up a home run in the first, but then after that settled in. And the best part about it, and he had a chance to visit with Jim Hayes on the pregame show, and he was telling Jim, best part about it, he, he had normal soreness today as if he pitched. And nothing that uh, was extra added on because of the injury. I talked to him also, and, and the fact that he threw 79 pitches, his pitch count was, you know, kind of a 70 to 80 type pitch. But, you know, he said after the first inning, you know, he kind of realized he could just breeze through it. He had great command of his off speed pitches. Pinheiro out to left. And we'll talk more about Kyle Lowe's when we come back. Cardinals go in order midway through two here in Cincinnati. Reds lead it by a run. Traveling in, can't catch our broadcast on television. Catch all the action on your computer at MLB.tv. Over 100 live out of market games per week. For complete details, visit STLCardinals.com. It's where baseball is always on. Cincinnati with the lead, one to nothing, and finish up our thoughts here about Kyle Loesch. I'm sure that the Cardinals would be intrigued about having him make a start at the big league level, but uh, Al, that won't be the case. No, and I think it's the wise case, too. And, you know, he told me it was a little bit odd. He had great command of his off speed pitches. So innings two, three, and four, he just breezed through. But he realized and, and smartly realized that he needed to work on his fastball command. So he threw a lot more fastballs the fifth inning and kind of tired out. But that is the, it really doesn't matter what the results are. As long as he comes back and says what he says, the normal stiffness, soreness, but, uh, and, you know, he's only going to make one start before the All-Star break, so, you know, go ahead and have him uh, make another minor league rehab start and then probably be in line for one of those games on the day-night doubleheader in Chicago on Sunday. Broken bat lifted out to shallow left center field and Keel coming on to make the catch. And Jay Bruce is retired. How about Jay Bruce? 18 home runs. He's got 40 driven in, but he's only hitting, coming into play tonight, 215. On base percentage is under 300. That's terrible. He doesn't walk. No, he doesn't walk and striking out a lot and just kind of that swing and miss, you know, syndrome of, uh, you know, hit home runs. I guess he's, he saw enough of Adam Dunn. He's going to be the reincarnation of Adam Dunn. You think Adam Dunn finishes that uh, two year contract in Washington? They're fin finding out very quickly in a big, spacious ballpark. He's probably a DH or a first baseman. Well, and I also think, too, that, you know, he'd become very attractive to a contender down the stretch. How good would he look in this lineup with the Cardinals? Sure. You've been saying that for a while. I, you know, I just look for you've got a, a once in a generation, maybe once in a lifetime type player in Albert Pujols and my thinking is this is Thurston makes the throw across the diamond is that if you got that player in that gym which is Albert Pujols you find every way to win with him and that means finding him protection around the lineup which Adam Dunn as Ryan Zimmerman has found out in Washington has helped yes and I'm not saying go get Adam Dunn I'm just saying you got to try to find protection for Pujols right and, and you know right now we, we kind of see a glaring need at third base and, and we're talking about Hopefully DeRosa can do that. Troy Gloss has reported to Florida, but I mean he's got to be at least a month, six weeks away from uh, helping you. Here's Jerry Harrison, and he's had great numbers against the Cardinals, against Pinheiro, five for 13. And you look at left field as a spot where you could, uh, you know, definitely have an upgrade. 
I do believe in watching Ludwig the last couple of nights. That I think he's fine. Yeah, yeah I, mean, I think he, we're he's starting okay. to come out of it. Yeah, I'm not concerned about that. But you know, if 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 you don't get power numbers in production from Ankiel and and Lud and excuse me, Duncan, you know, realistically, you know, there's there, you know, do they they've got to pick up the pace. This club's not going to win unless the outfielders start doing what you thought they would. That's right. Here's an 0-2 pitch. And you, you know you say, well, you can't put all the blame on them. Well, yes, you can because they're starting to get paid to where they're going to be in the middle of that lineup and assume a lot more responsibility. Pitching staff, I think you like the way things have come around with them. And, you know, Wellemeyer last night gives you a little bit more leeway in, in bringing back Kyle Loesch. If, if Wellemeyer went out last night and gave you two innings, all of a sudden you're thinking in the back of your mind, can we afford to have Kyle Loesch make another rehab start? Exactly right. And, you know, you hopeful that, that Brad Thompson will right the ship. I mean, you need to have a sinker ball pitcher. You got Pinheiro, and then it's odd that he finally get uh, got his first ground ball out. That concerns me a little yes, bit. Yes, it does. And there's a ground ball. Brendan Ryan deep in the hole. Long throw to first and not in time, but still made it fairly close. Hairston can run. This shows you the uh, athleticism and the defense that Brendan Ryan can give you at short. And we're talking about ground balls. We always say with Pinheiro, he's going to give up his share of ground ball base hits. But he always has that ability to next batter to get a double play. So, you know, it's just one of those issues. And a very nice play by Brendan Ryan. Boy, he's getting fun to watch. And other teams are taking notice too. You better believe it. You know, his range is tremendous. He, he gets kind of a little spark and a jump to the team, and he's not uh, hurting you with the bat anymore. Is he better served, though, being a leadoff man for the Cardinals? His numbers in that leadoff spot. And talking about Brendan Ryan are very good. He has hits in 12 of the 17 games. He's been your leadoff man. And as you mentioned, he does give you a little bit of a spark. I, I think you're going to see what happened like last night with a left hander on the mound. He's your leadoff man. And whether Schumacher moves to the second spot or not, but against a right hander, you know, after Tony likes him as his second leadoff hitter batting in the ninth spot. One ball, one strike, two outs, runner at first. This is Janish. Hits from the right side, the shortstop, who's good defensively, but at this level, trying to hit, it has been a struggle. He's hitting 243. On the ground to Joe Thurston. Easy way to go to Schumacher covering at second base. Brendan Ryan. Cardinal shortstop leads it off in the third when we come back. Saturday afternoons were made for baseball, and this week Fox brings you the national game of the week. David Wright and the Mets take on Chase Utley and the Phillies. Tigers, Twins, Dodgers, Padres. Fox Saturday baseball this week only on Fox. Check local listings for the game and start time in your area. Game two of our series tomorrow afternoon on the air at 11.30 tomorrow morning. Brad Thompson and Micah Owings, who is listed as a position player when he's not right. pitching because he can hit. Yes, he can. Remember, he's at a home run off of Franklin this year. That's right. Owings is 5 and 8. Thompson is 2 and 4. And speaking of the Dodgers, they'll be on the game of the week tomorrow. Manny Ramirez returns tonight as the Dodgers have scored a total of eight runs in the past five games and Manny returns to their lineup tonight. Juan Pierre hit close to 330 the time that Manny was gone with his 50 game suspension and now he has to go to the bench. That's a tough pill to swallow right there. <laughs> and I think he had 21 steals during that time and but he's being well compensated so I guess that is uh, the goes with the territory. Yep. Here's a 1 1 pitch to Brendan Ryan out in front pulls it foul. It was 16 years ago today. Don Drysdale passed away at the age of 56. Remember that? Montreal. Montreal found him in the hotel room. He's, you know, he didn't report to the ballpark and they started calling, couldn't get a hold of him. And tragically, someone went to the room and found him. 209 wins for Drysdale, 49 of those shutouts. Dominating pitcher that was inducted into baseball's Hall of Fame back in the early 80s. I laughed one time when I was told when he was with the Angels, he criticized me for pitching inside. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Don Drysdale questioning someone, anybody, whether yeah. it's you or the anybody. Guy in the that's stands. the point. Yeah. I mean, I mean, who cares? He pitched inside more than anybody. Right. I mean, you did not feel comfortable in that batter's box as he owned the inside part of it. Pretty much on the outside too. But when did you think that the, the game started to change where guys really did stop pitching inside? I think when the umpires, in an effort to, as Brandon Ryan strikes out, third strikeout for Bailey, but I think when the umpires started to try and, you know, control, you know, not necessarily the beanball wars, but trying to stop. Uh, you know, pitch. You know, guys uh, getting hit, going out to the mound. The warnings on the each warnings side. The warnings on each side, and I think they started trying to do that. But what it did is it gave the hitters a false sense of security, and then it got to the point where anytime anybody would throw inside, they a hitter took the attitude, "Hey, they're trying to hit me," instead of just trying to get you out. And I do believe that when you see college pitchers that come out, they don't like to throw inside because of aluminum bats. Yeah, you can't break an aluminum bat. So you know they all become developed breaking balls. And you know and this is Tony's point about you know pitchers why you should learn how to pitch inside. Well if you don't ever try it it's hard to do it. And a lot of hitters just dive across the plate. Little tapper towards second base Phillips smoothly over the first. St. Louis County moms and dads the Cardinals alumni kids clinics are coming to Manchester Athletic Association July 7th and 9th boys and girls ages 7 to 13 can learn baseball fundamentals from former Cardinal greats and find out more at stlcardinals.com slash clinics a happy 75th birthday to Dr. Harvey Silver from Short Hills New Jersey I've been carrying this message ever since uh, City Field in New York yeah and that was the uh, the, the uh, young man or young lady. I guess both were very young, weren't they, Alan? Yeah, well, that's they what they were I, screaming at you. Yeah, that's what I thought. That you know, if that was Dr. Silver, he was the one that was wanting to, you know, get a third baseman, you know, get a hitter. Well, now he should be happy. Should be happy. <laughs> Mark DeRosa is here, and Troy Gloss is a coming. We think. One ball, one strike, two outs, nobody on. Here's DeRosa. Coming inside on him, to see if it's a fastball. Duncan walked first time up. It's popped up. There is a play. Sliding and making a tremendous catch. Did he catch it? No, the ball scooted away. He's hurt. And Jerry Hairston Jr. is hurt. You know, I mean, I thought he made a tremendous play right there. And, but the ball, you saw it later. And, Immediately, Ramon Hernandez, the catcher, called for help. Dusty Baker now pops out of the dugout. Right by the Cardinal dugout, and watch the third baseman come in here, try to slide to stop his progress, but he hits that area hard and rams his leg. You see, it's concrete on the bottom there, and that's what he hits his knee right in that concrete area. They've had their share of injuries, haven't they? Edwin Encarnacion is uh, just been activated off the DL, but Dusty Baker did not play him tonight, and there were some questions as to whether or not he should have been activated at this point in the season. They're not sure he's ready to play. I look over to my right, and Walt Jockety is watching very closely here with Jerry Hairston Jr. still limping there near that third base line. Uh, Incarnacion, their very fine third baseman. He's been on the DL since April 28th with a chip fracture in his left wrist. He did make 11 rehab appearances and hit 272 home runs and eight RBIs of Louisville. And when he was disabled, he was hitless in his last 12 at bats and one for his last 28. Ouch. Harrison's gonna gonna stay in there as well, Harrison probably knows that Incarnacion is been activated and so you want to you want to make a lasting impression not by running into a concrete Duncan rolls over on the pitch give him credit for staying in the game yeah that and was a nasty little collision over there with that fence great effort on the ball and sore knee to, to boot 
Now he's figuring out his left elbow hurts too. <laughs> Wait for a couple innings. Here's a one two pitch they set up outside. A little bit low. You can see where Homer Bailey can get it up there. As uh, we've seen him a couple of times tonight around 95 miles an hour his given name is David he's called Homer after his great grandpa. Outstanding high school career as Duncan reaches for the ball that was low and grounds out. Homer Bailey. 41 and 4 in high school with a point nine eight ERA leads it off when we come back. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Kia Motors. To learn more, visit Kia.com. By Affleck, we've got you under our wing. And by the Casino Queen Hotel and Casino, home of the loser slots. Banks of the Ohio, the great American ballpark, where the Cardinals have historically, a brief history here, not played all that well. Nice play by Albert Pujols. Cardinals are 24 and 26 at this ballpark and that's the lowest winning percentage of any team that has played at least 50 plus here. There have been some crazy games we've seen at this ballpark. Oh sure. No, no lead is safe in this ballpark. Look at Joe Thurston the Cardinal third baseman playing in now with Chris Dickerson up the top of the lineup. But just joining us Albert Pujols was named the National League Player of the Month. Thank you Albert. Take it right on cue. Beats him to the bag for the out. Now Dickerson swinging the bat much better. Seven game hitting streak around 400 during that time. But he scored the lone run of this game after he doubled to lead off the first off of Pinheiro. And now we're starting to see those ground balls. August 2nd by the way is a build a bear workshop day at Bush Stadium 12,000 kids ages 12 and under with a paid admission get a limited edition Cardinals pup three four five ninety five hundred to find out more and that first pitch is taken upstairs by Willie Tavares I was a little bit surprised that we didn't see Lance Nix in the starting lineup for the Cincinnati Reds Nix. In seven games this year against the Cardinals with outstanding numbers. Three home runs, nine RBIs, but part of the reason is because of Pinheiro's very good numbers against him. Albert Pujols in the fourth, two up first. We'll watch Cardinals crew tomorrow at 11. Fred Bird and Andy Venice go on a cleaning frenzy to get Bush Stadium ready for the All Star game. Cardinals crew made possible by Shriners Hospital for Children. Air Saturdays on Fox Sports Midwest. So here is Pools, the player of the month in the National League. With all the great things that he's done this year, Albert also leads the team in steals. And <laughs> yesterday, the Cincinnati Reds picked up a walk-off win. Thanks to Joey Votto, their big slugger, so the Cardinals can see if their big slugger, Albert Pujols, can tie it up with one swing of the bat. Albert tried to call time and was not granted when he struck out the first time. Let's see if this is the splitter. And the 1 0 pitch. Ripped and caught by Hairston Jr. Great catch. What a play. Talking about third base, a reactionary position. You only have time for a dive, maybe one step and a dive, and there was no time for the step, just the dive, and he comes up with it. Remember, just moments ago, when sliding in for the ball that was popped up by Duncan and hit the concrete near the uh, Cardinal dugout, and comes up with that diving catch. Great play by Jerry Hairston Jr. Here's Ryan Ludwig who flied out to deep right field first time up. The sunshine is at home plate so some shadows in the mix there. We're in the fourth one nothing Reds. Here comes an 0 1 pitch to Ryan Ludwig. Boy a season ago he was an all star and 
A lot of the damage that he did was against the Reds. 385 average, four home runs, 14 RBIs. This year, a different story, 087. But that probably tells the story of what he's talked about and how he gets pitched so much differently this year than a year ago. And, and the fact that his timing has been off, and I think you will see her get better, but not uh, in this at bat. So Bailey gets the strikeout, his fourth of the evening. What happened to all the control problems for this young man? There's the, you have to see the way that downward action, the split, uh, you know, his split finger fastball that he's been working on. Interesting that you said he had to call Walt Jockey and get permission yes. to use that pitch. Two outs. <laughs> well, apparently with Bailey, it's been a lot of back and forth with Dick Pole and trying to figure out how to throw strikes, be better as far as command is concerned. And Dick Pohl is their pitching coach here in Cincinnati. Let's see how they pitch Ricky and Keel. That's the breaking ball and a strike. Rick saw one fastball in the previous at bat and he struck out swinging in the first. And Rick grounds it towards short. Glove by Yanish. They get Ankeel by a step. Cardinals quiet tonight with the bats. Just one base hit by Skip Schumacher to start the game. Can stay in shape all year with the Cardinals. Sunday, July 19th against Arizona is the Diet Coke and Deerberg's exercise mat giveaway at Bush Stadium. 25,000 fans ages 16 and over receive this item as they enter the gates. For tickets, visit stocardinals.com. I think a good promotion with that exercise, Matt, is we ought to get uh, Jim the Cat Hayes to show everybody his workout routine with that, Matt. Quite a workout, apparently. Oh, yeah. He puts himself through as Vado flies out to center. By the way, that's also a family Sunday, so terrace or pavilion reserve seats. Get a free hot dog and uh, soda on that Sunday against Arizona. And also, kids run the bases afterwards, too. Need experience to take your kid on the field and have them run the bases at Bush Stadium. Brandon Phillips, second baseman, is flied out to right, hitting 268 at the start of play tonight. And how his career has evolved to now being the uh, the cleanup man for the Cincinnati Reds. As to him about his thumb, and he's got that fracture in the tip of his thumb. So is that healed now? And he goes, No, I still feel it. Tried to talk him into taking. Uh, this series off to let it really fully heal. He says, no, I'll just wait till the All-Star break. I'm sure he appreciated that too, your concern. Well, you know, I mean, he he did. He, he really was thinking about it. I said, look, you could really you know, take three days off this weekend and you have the, you know, the three or four days for the All-Star break, then it'll be fully healed. After considerable consideration, he decided he'd just take the All-Star break off. This guy's a good player, too. He is. You know, he he's a very he's good player. A little flashy when he first came over from highly talented in the Cleveland organization, but he, he can back it up now with his fielding and hitting. 0-2 oh, pitch. Thurston and diving stop at third base. Gets up. High throw to Albert and makes the play. I was wondering about that. You, know, he, you see where he's playing, that, you know, guarding the line here. I thought that was a bit odd, but ranges to his left and makes a nice play on a hard hit ball. Wouldn't be odd in the uh, ninth, but it certainly yeah. is midway in this game. That's what my point be. Yep. Then you got a ground ball pitcher on the mound. To bring up an interesting point about Phillips. It might relate to Mike DeRosa, where I'm sure the Indians look at Brandon Phillips as a guy that got away. You know, did we let him develop enough? What did we do wrong to where now? Here he is still in state with Cincinnati and uh, he is a fixture here as Bruce lifts it into deep right field and this is off the wall and Keel bare hands and fires it back into the infield and my point being is the ball scoots away is that with a guy like DeRosa what if you're Cleveland and you trade him he's a, he's 32 and he likes it in Cincinnati signs a two or three year contract extension puts up great numbers and all of a sudden you got to explain that to your fans again right you know and, and here's a guy that was a big acquisition for you and then you let him go early and he helps another club win right this state in baseball history the Cardinals commit 17 errors in a doubleheader 
Lost to the Reds 10 to 2 and 13 to 7 which would tie a modern Major League Baseball record. That would be extremely hard to do. But they accomplished it. Oh. <laughs> Apparently they did. <laughs> So Jay Bruce with the devil and here is Ramon Hernandez. Take a look at Jay Bruce rounding first base here. Well, he's watching the play in the outfield and then uh oh better watch out for Albert. Yeah he had all there is. Is running lane almost stepped on Albert. How would you like to have your Achilles oh. uh, tendon get severed by a guy stepping on you and rounding the bases. And Pujols has got to be leery of that too. He's got to watch that runner coming around. Well, he will trail after he gets by him. Exactly. And then try to be in position where if you want to throw behind the runner as your cutoff men are out there in the field. Hernandez very good numbers against the Cardinals this year and it's really proven to be a, a valuable guy for the Cincinnati Reds. He can play first base as well and when Votto was out that's what he did. Pulls it foul. They're in a pretty good situation with their catching tandem is and again is is doing a you know, lead to National League rookies in batting with, with 336 and on base percentage 423. And he has a seven game hitting streak almost 500 during that time, but the veteran getting to play here tonight. One thing we saw with Todd Wellemeyer last night establishing the, the fastball first time through, and I know mechanics he felt uh, is, as good as he's felt all year. First time all year, I think he felt like he pitched last year. Here's a grounder hit to short. Brendan Ryan up with it. Over two pool holes. Molina, Thurston, and Pinheiro coming up for the Cardinals. In the fifth, it's 1 0. Cue the duck. It's the Aflac trivia question. Our thinking caps are on, and here we go. How many gold gloves did Johnny Bench, Hall of Fame catcher of the Reds, win? Affleck. Double digits, you would presume. 10 consecutive for Johnny Bench. 14 time All Star, two time MVP, won the MVP in 70 and 72. And a pretty good catcher right here, Yadier Molina, known for his defense. You know, Ted Simmons was a better hitter than Johnny Bench. Not he had more power and hit more home runs, but there was a huge separation between Johnny Bench's defense and those gold gloves. They say Johnny Bench had some of the biggest hands of any catcher and where Molina and Mike Matheny are known for really blocking balls. Bench was known for picking. I remember talking to him one time about that how. He said it's not how you teach it but that's how I did it. He said I had soft hands always growing up. had large hands and I picked the ball more so than I did getting down putting the glove between my legs. And blocking the baseball. So that's how he would do it. Molina very well could be on his way to another gold glove. And Yadier shoots one at a deep left center field. Tavares makes the catch in front of the Reds bullpen. So Bailey is cruising in this game only one hit allowed August 2nd the build a bear workshop day at Bush Stadium 12,000 kids ages 12 and under with a paid admission get a limited edition Cardinals pup. For tickets, number to call 345 9500 or visit STLCardinals.com. What kind of limited edition? Very. It's it's said very limited edition. So make sure you know that, Roboski. Well, I think it would be barely. You know, if it's build a bear. A very limited edition. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Build a bear and very limited. You know, you're trying to be cute with the promo. Yeah, that's yeah, a good idea. I mean? I'm going to say very with a V. Very limited edition. And I'll say barely with a B. That's fine. Here's Yadi Molina with one out. And Thurston hit by the pitch after Molina made the first out here in this fifth inning. So Thurston is aboard after flying out to right. And finally, the Cardinals maybe can get something <laughs> going here offensively. That's right. Thurston, any way to get on base, he'll take this. And on the thigh. And just hustling professional is running down to first base. Cardinals one base hit. And after that base hit it was Schumacher that had the hit Duncan would walk and they had pools coming up in the first. Couldn't cash in as Pinheiro. 
Offered at it, so it's a strike. Trying to pull back, but called the strike on a high pitch. Those mustaches are doing wonders for the pitching staff. <laughs> Some look a little better than others. Oh yeah, I, I did. I did see Brad Thompson. He, it's coming in. It'll take a while, folks, but it, he is growing one. Did he offer at it? He did. Yes. And Dan, this is the only thing that would separate you from the the uh, Cardinals pitching rotation is your inability to grow a mustache. Not a chance. Other, otherwise, you would have been right there. Oh right? yeah, yeah. The way I've been able to do that over the years. And they're all concerned about you know who is going to ask Carpenter. Carpenter doesn't like it, but uh, you know, but he's going along with it. I would just get out of his way. <laughs> well, the day they started this was the day he pitched, so they didn't ask him about that day. And Yarrow can't help himself. That's that's it. And he's frustrated in his inability to get a man in scoring position. Little things like that. He's, his teammates are not giving him any run support. Or very very little the last month plus. And but he doesn't help his own cause. I couldn't believe it. We did a game on a, on a Friday night, and uh, then we had a Saturday afternoon game, and you had a full grown in Fu Manchu. Well, I started my facial hair as a tribute to the Cardinal bullpenners, and now it's shifted to. And now the and now the pitching. Maybe staff you should shave the chin and just go with the mustache tomorrow. It's a thought. Yeah, but it's not a good one. Okay, well you, you got to do what you got to do, Al. <laughs> Brendan Ryan, I don't like that play with two outs. Not two outs, and the best thing about it is it rolls foul, so. He does that too much, yeah. doesn't he? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's one thing to get the, the defense drawn in, you know, and, and stuff, but uh, Brendan right now is one of our better, better chances, so swing the bat, see if he can get an extra base hit. Ninth in the order for the Cardinals and Tony La Russa tonight, two outs and a runner at first base. And a check on Thurston. Thurston with three steals this year. Homer Bailey is allowed just the one base hit. He's walked one. He's hit a man and he's struck out five. And this continues the trend of very good pitching for the Reds. Last two games, the Reds pitching outstanding. 2 0, oh, two runs allowed, 21 strikeouts, and a .95 ERA. The question right now, Dan, is, is the pitching around the league that good or is it just the Hitting that bad. Hitting that bad. Yeah. Maybe a combination of both. I'm sure it is. And things go in cycles. So about the time, you know, Dick Pohl was telling me that, you know, that he said, you know, White Sox came in here complaining about their lack of offense. And he said they just roughed up the Reds pitching. But then you get on a good roll, there's Volquez. They've got good young pitching here in Cincinnati with Volquez and Cueto. Cardinals in this series will miss both, and one of those young men is uh, on the DL, dealing with an elbow issue. Volquez, right? But he did throw today, or was projected to throw today on the sidelines to see how he's progressing. 0 oh 2 the count here on the Cardinals shortstop, Brendan Ryan. It's our, it foul and out of play. Our buddy and former Cardinal pitcher, Mike Lincoln. Is on the disabled list with a bulging disc in his neck. Mentioned Incarnacion just being activated, but he's missed a better part of this season. And I mentioned those numbers in the last two games for the Cincinnati Reds. You have to go back to Elmer Descends and Ron Malone, back to back games like that in 2000. And one of those games was the complete game by Malone against St. Louis. What did he have, 12 strikeouts? Or 12 strikeouts. Ryan. Right field, Bruce has got it. Did he snow cone it? Yes, he did. Jay Bruce with the catch in right. And Brendan 0 for 2. Midway through 5. Reds lead at 1-0. Visit on the run at mobile locations now through July 4th to purchase raffle tickets to win a game-used autographed Cardinals Road jersey from Jackie Robinson Day. You could be the winner of the Pujols jersey and two party room tickets against the Dodgers in July. Mobile on the run, big supporter of amateur boxing in the St. Louis area. And we want to tell everybody at 2 p.m. tomorrow at the Ballpark Saloon, there'll be seven professional bouts, four amateur bouts, 
including Chris Epley's uh, WBC eight round title foot uh, title fight at the 175 pound. That's hit out to deep left field. One hops off the wall. Duncan quickly gets it back in. Jerry Harrison Jr. stay in the game. He made a diving catch on the rope off the bat of Pools. After it looked like he injured his knee and now he picks up a double. He's two for two. And that's 2 p.m. tomorrow as you see the double here. And just a line drive out over the head of Duncan. Plays the carom perfectly. And all the proceeds will go to benefit amateur boxing in the St. Louis area. So runner at second base and here is Janish. Showing bunt and foul. How about this Al the Cardinals have scored three or fewer runs of support in 12 consecutive starts for Pinheiro. Well, that's why he's got nine losses. I mean he's pitched much better than a nine game loser. And but he's gotten very little run support. What was it like 11 runs in his last five starts. It's almost as bad as Carpenter's. Carpenter not about getting two, any about two runs a game. Right. That's outside. One ball one strike you know a year ago this was about the time he really had to keep a close eye on Pinero that fifth or sixth inning if he could get over the hump and this season it's been a different story he came into spring training in very good shape was not part of the World Baseball Classic. He was focused in spring training and we've seen him because of that I think go deeper into games. Oh, no doubt about it. And a liner caught by Pinheiro and he can field his position. Yes he can. He's very good and in my mind the best Cardinal fielding pitcher. But showed by early in the bat lets him swing away a little slider down there and Pinheiro snags the line drive right back at him. But you know he you talk about Carpenter you talk about the Nero, these guys just get no run support. I mean you just have to separate that somebody's going to get those runs and there for a while it was Wainwright getting the most run support in the National League but it's starting to tilt and swing the other way now too. Here's one out and the pitcher Bailey so chance for Pinero to get out of this inning as you see a Wainwright on the right and Carpenter just a ducked under there that overhang of the dugout. Remember, now you see him. Wainwright had the no decision where he went nine innings and struck out a career high 12 and uh, left that game with just a one run tie. Bailey a check swing couldn't hold up and we'll see Carpenter throw on uh, Sunday against Bronson Arroyo open date for the Cardinals on Monday and then Tuesday Wednesday Thursday in Milwaukee and then four games at Wrigley Field against Chicago before the All Star break so very important to stretch here for the Cardinals before the break. Another check swing and Dan while we got the time you know Rip Rowan is not on the this road trip as he's back home the Cardinals equipment manager and he is uh, preparing the clubhouse and everything for the All Star festivities but we want to thank Rip what a great job he and his staff do and not only uh, getting us and answering our request for the luggage and everything but boy, they are the best in baseball. Thurston gets it on the short hop looks back the runner at second base and makes the play. So two outs runner at second base and we're back to the top of the lineup also while we have the time as Dickerson will dig in with two outs our buddy John Ronzik as you see the pitch count for Joel Pinheiro a number of years he was co-owner of Auto Tire in St. Louis was recently uh, gone through major surgery in the hospital he's watching tonight at St. Luke's and uh, John we're pulling for you want to see you at the ballpark and on the golf course very soon. That's right good friend. You know he's a wonderful guy and does a lot of charity in town and very generous with his money and his time. And one of the real good people in St. Louis. We wish him nothing but the best, and we'll see him soon. One thing I've noticed about Pinero with his sinker and getting the, the good movement is his velocity has not been as high as it was, and maybe he's sacrificing some of that velocity by a mile or two, a uh, mile per hour or two, just to get a little bit more movement, a little bit more sink. You agree? You, you can overthrow a sinker. 
And then you has a tendency to flatten out, straighten out. You don't get the movement. Kind of stay on top of it. And really, it's a pitch that you know you want people to put in play. You want them to swing down on it, hit on top of it, and hit a ground ball. So it, it helps with more velocity, but it's not critical with the sinker. A 2-0 pitch and a strike to Dickerson. He doubled first time up and has scored the only run of this game for the Cincinnati Reds. And he also grounded out to first. Bench and Johnny Bench before, part of the big red machine. Of course, you played against him. One of the great runs of baseball history here in Cincinnati, no doubt. Up the middle, Pinero's got it. Steps and throws to Albert Pujols. Top of the lineup coming up for the Cardinals in the sixth. Only one hit tonight for St. Louis. Albert is due up third. It's time to bring you up to speed with the AT&T Rapid Rewind. The nation's fastest 3G network, AT&T, your world delivered. Top of the sixth rolls in here at the Great American Ballpark. The Cardinals have been out hit 5-1. Cincinnati leads it by a run. Here, Skip Schumacher has the only hit. He started the game off with a base hit. He's also grounded out to second, and Homer Bailey is throwing strikes tonight. Only one walk allowed. Talked about it so much that the All-Star game is on its way to St. Louis. Two-time All-Star and a former Cardinal is Scott Cooper. And Jim will visit with him momentarily. He's here at the ballpark with his youth team. And Scott did that when he was with the Boston Red Sox. Here's a 1-1 pitch. And Schumacher hits it down the left field line. It's slicing Dickerson over and makes the catch. Jim, take it away with Scott Cooper. Dan, you mentioned it, Scott, uh, two-time All-Star with the Red Sox, former Cardinal, a St. Louis guy. But you're here in Cincinnati with a purpose. What is it? Yeah, we, uh, my partner Matt Whiteside and I, we've got our St. Louis Gamers teams, two, our top two 17-year-old teams here for a Midwest uh, showcase here in Cincinnati. And we thought we'd take in a Cardinal game. We're having a great time. And don't you have some tryouts coming up that you want to let folks know about? Yeah, we do. Um, July 28th and 29th, ages 12 through 17. Um, they can register at stlgamers.net. Uh, you know, we, we like to think we do a good job with the kids here in St. Louis, born and raised here in St. Louis, have a lot of, a lot of fun with what we're doing. In terms of your career, a former All-Star, two-time All-Star, has to be a thrill for uh, the All-Star game coming to St. Louis, at least for you. Oh, it's great. It's great. My wife said, hey, do you want to go to the All-Star game? I said, heck yeah. We, you know, it's a, it's a great situation down there. Cardinals are doing a great job putting it on. I can't wait to hear Albert uh, when he walks up here. That place is going to erupt. Well, I know you guys do a great job uh, with the young athletes. Uh, thanks for sharing a little info. Oh, thank you guys very much. Thanks for coming. Scott Cooper, Dan, will send it back to you. Okay, Jim, thanks. Good job. And speaking of Albert Pujols, he'll dig in with two outs. Cardinal fans, when it comes to tickets, you deserve Major League Service or go online to StubHub. It's the official fan-to-fan -fan ticket marketplace of the Cardinals, only site with fan protect guarantee. Yeah, Take Dan. me in the mindset, by the way, real quickly here, Al, of Homer Bailey. You've got two outs, one run lead. It's starting to get later in this game. Do you give Pujols, even in this spot, anything to hit? I would not think so. And you got two outs, so you can pitch around him. And his strikeout in the first inning, that the ball was mislocation. It was where they set up away. They were starting him off with a breaking ball, but that ball just ran right up and in on, on Pools, became an extremely effective pitch. Next time, he lines out to third base. So you better be careful when with two outs, you should be able to pitch around him. Here's a 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. I, I was just watching Hernandez recently, you know, just the last few pitches. He is an excellent receiver. You talk about a catcher being quiet. Watch the way he, very little movement, gives that low target. And this is really, a, you know, a, a treat to watch a guy pitch a catch like this. Ooh, got away with that pitch, two and one. See so yeah, he doesn't move a muscle. You know, I mean, he's just, you know, so quiet right there, gives that good target. Is a low center of gravity. As a pitcher, I'm sure you really have to appreciate how quiet he is. Oh, absolutely! Doesn't take anything away from you, you know, by, by, uh, you know, moving the glove or bouncing up and down. There's a fastball. Look out! 
I thought he got away with the last pitch for sure. Well that's where sometimes you know you, you sit there and you get uh, a little false sense of security. Fastball in. He, this is what Bailey wants to throw. The 2-1 to Albert. Outside Pujols. You know you start thinking about Albert as being one of the greatest Cardinals already in his career. Home runs. He only trails Stan Musial. Stan at 475. Pujols 349. Leads in on base percentage, slugging percentage, and he's in the top five in batting average all time in Cardinals history. Albert, a high fly ball. That'll stay in the ballpark. And the catch made by Tavares. One hit allowed by Homer Bailey. Bud Light, what's on tap? And the difference is drinkability. Brad Thompson makes his seventh start and seventh consecutive after being uh, in the season, the opener as a bullpen guy and then sent down to the minor leagues. Cards are 20 and 10 when he starts since 06. That's got to say something. 20 and 10? <laughs> well, of course it does. It means he's a winner. Yes, it does. Giving his team a chance to win the last two times, though, it's been blowouts. Leadoff base hit by Tavares. Sixth hit of the night for the Cincinnati Reds. You know, the Reds bullpen the last five games has been a strength for them. No earned runs in the last five games. They've struck out 15 and 16 and two thirds. The point being you're getting late into this game. They've got an excellent closer in Francisco Cordero. They really like what they've gotten out of Nick Massett. David Weathers we've seen him. Arthur Rhodes from the left side very good. Man, they, they're relievers as a whole lead the National League in ERA. Popped foul and out of play. Here's Joey Votto who is 0 for 2. And remember the lone run that the Reds have in this ball game against Pinero was unearned. We we're starting to get into the conversation about the big red machine Johnny Bench won those championships in 75 and 76. What was it like competing against one of the great teams really in the history of baseball. Well the thing about them is a little tapper swing and bunt. Only play is the first. So the thing about about the big red machine is they hit until they turn the lights off. <laughs> I mean they just came there and they just punished you, you know, one after another. They're, they're, it was a complimentary of teams. You guys like Geronimo were great uh, defensive guys, but Perez was the great RBI machine. You know, you you had the table setters like like uh, Griffey, Senior. You know, you, you had uh, Johnny Bench in the middle, but you, you know you had a lot of characters. You know, Beetle Bailey. Bob Bailey was a great pinch hitter coming off the bench. But uh, you know Concepcion was a, as tough an out as you're going to find. Rose was going to get his base hits, but they usually were singles. You know, so you, you really didn't mind facing Pete Rose at all. And Johnny Bench, you know, you, you know, if you made mistakes, he could hurt you. But you were able to pitch to him. And as I said, the the guy and Joe Morgan, you know, Sparky Anderson calls him the greatest uh, offensive player he ever made. Unbelievable teams. Yeah, and you know, and Perez was the glue. I talked to Eduardo this past week, and we saw him in New York a couple of weeks ago. Eduardo Perez, the former Cardinal and son of Tony Perez, the Hall of Famer. I said, "What was the best thing you learned from your dad?" And he said, "That I didn't have to play baseball." He said he never forced it on me. He said I was just, I enjoyed being around the ballpark. And Sparky Anderson had a rule with that big red machine with Ken Griffey Jr. and Tony Perez his kid Eduardo he said any, any of the sons that were around could not come into the clubhouse when the team lost right he said you have to understand when we lose we lose and uh, I want it to be taken seriously yeah this is not a time to mess around you know, Sparky was an interesting guy that if when your rookie year he owned you I mean he was extremely difficult and hard on the rookies and his Philosophy was if you survive that year, then you know how to, what I expect, both on and off the field, how to conduct yourself as a professional, and then you pass the test and you're, you're on your own. Phillips pulls it down the left field line. Fair ball into the corner. A run will score to make it two to nothing, Cincinnati. 
Brandon Phillips with his 53rd RBI. Well, a lot of a lot of conversation between Pinheiro and Molina as after the base hit got down, Pinheiro started walking all the way home plate with his arms outstretched. Like I tell you what, they were as animated as I've seen anybody this year. That's right. You know, he misses location on it, and the ball's up and in. It's supposed to be down and away, but when he came off the mound, his arms were outstretched and quite vocal in whatever his, he was saying to Molina. And then the conversation continued. They were they were kind of almost chest to chest. It looked right, like. Right. Here's Jay Bruce. He's doubled. One for two. He's also flied out to center. Two to nothing Reds here in game one of this three game series. And that's where you really got to guard against Pinero or other starting pitchers in this offensive drought. You know when they feel they have to be perfect. Remember the first run was unearned. Now you're down two nothing. You're getting late in this ball game. You know you just. You know, don't get your emotions carry away with you. You know, go back and get people out. It's two nothing now. Don't make sure it's not four nothing. One ball, one strike, and one out, and a runner at second base. You wonder what Dave Duncan was thinking when Pinero and Molina came together. Now again, the pitches are called by Molina and the pitcher. It's not called from the dugout. Right, and and in my mind, you know, is. You know, it almost looked like, you know, like you made me throw a pitch I didn't want to, but, you know, he missed location with the pitch. Right. Here's a 1 1 to Bruce. Hit in the air out to left. Duncan, under it, makes the catch. Phillips. Phillips back to second base. Baseball's biggest stars will go head to head. One spectacular night. Summer's biggest event as Fox brings you every thrilling moment of the 2009 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Coverage begins Tuesday, July 14th, live from St. Louis, 7 Central, only on Fox. Here's Hernandez. I didn't realize it, but tomorrow will be the 60th anniversary of uh, the famous speech, maybe the most famous speech, uh, Lou Gehrig's. You know, speech at Yankee Stadium mm -hmm. it was on 4th of July, 1939. Two outs, runner at second base. And a pitch taken for a strike by Hernandez. He's grounded out to third and grounded out to short. Speech that is still played every year. Time and again. I think it's going to be recited, what, in the seventh inning tomorrow? Correct. Talking about Hernandez, how quiet he is. Let's kind of just watch Molina. Time called, and that was called by Yadier. Not quiet enough to not call time. <laughs> <laughs> well, he could he could kind of whisper it to a home plate umpire. But, you know, we showed how quiet um, by meaning no movement, very. And now Hernandez calls time. Is this a little gamesmanship here? Yeah. You know. Molina sitting there, you know, calm down, use your head. So two outs and an 0 1 pitch. Maybe a message sent there with by Pinero with an inside pitch. Possibly. Uh huh. I'm saying, you want to call timeout? Fine. Pirates at Florida tonight looking at some of the central teams. Marlins have won eight straight at home. Houston later tonight at San Francisco. The Astros have won six straight against the Giants. Earlier today it was a truly a walk off win as the Cubs in ten innings beat Milwaukee two to one. Kevin Gregg picked up the win for Chicago. He's three and two. And we were watching the game up here in the booth and the pitch that was called a ball looked to be a strike and this is loaded walk yes scores a winning run on a pitch that many people thought was a strike and the reaction by the players of the Milwaukee Brewers told the story as they went after the umpire and but the game was over and that was it yeah 
Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a two nothing lead here in the bottom of the sixth. Very early dinner reservations, apparently. Yeah. He was getting out of there. He's in a great town to do it. <laughs> Ooh, that hit him. Yeah. That hit him. So to the Russo now we'll start looking at that card and see who's coming up. What kind of matchups favor the Cardinals. How much longer he sticks here with Pinheiro. Dave Duncan out to talk to him and so we say you know what I mean you, you get into a situation where you feel you got to be perfect you, you allow an unearned run back in the first inning then you get there the first earned run here in the sixth inning you're down to nothing. The team is just absolutely shut out offensively and you really got to guard against you know let your concentration and just sit there and say well I've already got an L. Two the, nothing you can come back but all of a sudden you just throw a big crooked number out there then it's all really tough. We were watching the post game the other day Al a couple nights ago even Tony La Russa, who rarely says anything to call out the players not like he was calling them out but he said hey there's no question our offense is stagnant right now. Yes. We got to get something going. And right now, you know, I mean, he's he's having a hard time even trying to help out and manufacture runs. The, the team is station to station. You know, it just it doesn't walk that much. And you know, when if Albert doesn't do it, you know, the, you, they're mostly your, the guys that get hits are usually singles. So it takes a lot to generate some runs. Runners at first and second. Here's Jerry Harrison Jr. Infield base hit in the second, and he doubled back in the fifth inning, two for two. Harrison earlier tonight in a pop up by Duncan. He's playing third base, tried to make a sliding catch near the Cardinal dugout, hit his knee on the concrete near the dugout. Looked like he would be taken out of this game. He stayed in, made a very fine diving catch and a line drive off the bat of pool holes. And then later, Devil, as I mentioned, he's two for two. The 1 0. Popped up. Is it playable for Molina? Near the screen, and it's out of play. Just on the back of the screen. One ball, one strike. Scattered seven hits. One one pitch left up. Ryan can't get to it. A run will score to make it three to nothing. That pitch was up. Hairston delivers. He's three for three and a three nothing lead for the Cincinnati Reds. And Brendan Ryan really playing in the hole. So a long way to go to his his left and it gets underneath him. So he's got that good range but he couldn't come up with this one. And they pick up their second run this inning. Cardinals now trail three to nothing. First and second. For Giannis, the eighth place hitter. Tonight he's grounded out to third and also lined out back to Pinheiro. The Cardinals looking ahead to the seventh will have Ludwig and Keel and Molina, but we talked about their very fine bullpen and just how well they have pitched. Certainly, it's not insurmountable, only a three run lead. Ludwig back with room. Makes the catch. He leads it off when we return. Reds pick up two more. They lead it by three. Back in Cincinnati, Cabot, Woodstain, legendary performance. Johnny Mize leads the Cardinals to a 5 3 win over the Cubs, hitting two home runs, a triple, and a double. In our legendary performance, the big cat, Johnny Mize. Branch Rickey traded him to the New York Giants. He also played for the Yankees for five years at the very uh, end of his career. A 312 career hitter, but he wasn't voted into the Hall of Fame until 1981 by the Veterans Committee. Yeah. 
Speaking of Branch Rickey, he is part of tonight's induction class for the College Baseball Hall of Fame. Branch Rickey was a former Michigan coach. Also, Barry Larkin, outstanding Cincinnati Reds player. Reds Hall of Famer Barry Larkin, 1995 uh, MVP, 12 time All Star, 19 Major League seasons, is in Lubbock, Texas tonight for his induction into the College Ball uh, Hall of Fame. How many gold gloves did Barry Larkin miss out on because of Ozzy? <laughs> All Star games. And Barry did win you know, the first time that Ozzy uh, broke his consecutive win streak. It was Barry that won the yep. gold glove. Always enjoyed being around him and watching him play the game. He was a terrific player. Yeah, great athletic family. Ludbrook feels cheated. Yep, broke his bat and grounds out. How about Homer Bailey? Start giving him some credit. Now, obviously, we've talked about the Cardinals' struggles offensively coming into the series, but Homer Bailey has been very good tonight. He has struck out five, and again, only one hit allowed. And the hit was Schumacher to lead off the game back in the first inning. A walk to Duncan follow. And then the only base runner since that time is when Thurston was hit by a pitch. Ricky and Keel first pitch hit out of play and Keel struck out swinging in the first and also grounded out to short. Cardinals 31 and 10 when they score first and just about the other way around when they don't and they trail tonight three to nothing. Here's the 0 one. The caps around baseball with the red, white, and blue and the stars and stripes. All right, in the 4th of July. We hope everybody has a safe, fun, happy holiday weekend for most folks. It kicked off this afternoon and today. For others, early start last night. A lot of folks at the ballpark last night. Here's a 1 2 pitch to Ricky and Keel outfield is deep and straight away. Did not go 2 and 2. Pitch counted 86 for Bailey he is due up first for the Reds. And they're half of the seventh. See what they let him go or just keep it a very positive outing. There's the curveball. Lifted in the air. Shallow right center. Tiberis. Joining the fun of Major League Baseball's All-Star Summer. Bring your family to Major League Baseball All-Star Fan Fest. And that will begin a week from tonight at America Center. For tickets, go to allstargame.com or by calling 888 fan fest See Brendan Phillips on that ball. I mean, both outfielders kind of converged on it, but the second baseman ran all the way out there, and then Tavares kind of looked at him like, you know, what are you doing? He said, you want the ball so bad, I, you know, he let him take it out of his glove to throw it in. <laughs> <laughs> you don't see that very no. often, do you? No. I mean, they're both chawing at each other out there. Phillips won the gold glove last year at second base, and apparently nobody called him off, so <laughs> he's out there doing what he's supposed to do. Set up outside. Here comes an 0 1 pitch to Molina. There's a good example of what you're talking about, Al, how quietly he moves to the outside and talking about Ramon Hernandez right to the outside portion of the plate. You know, the, the hitter sometimes can peek back or right. here. Yeah, you know, you watch some guys that, you know, they got to get up all the way out of their stance and everything like that. And that's where, they, you know, a hitter senses that. But you just watch how he just kind of moves. This is going to be the split finger fastball. Yadier Molina left field at the wall and it's off the top of the wall. And Yadi has himself a two out double. Finally the Cardinals pick up a base hit. Their second hit of the night and the first since the first batter of this game. And it's the split finger but didn't move didn't really move too much instead of being away it's on the inner part of the plate and he gets good wood on it. And misses a home run by about a well, right on the line, but not over the line. So misses it by inches. Well, 
Molina with five home runs this year picks up the double. And now Joe Thurston Thurston hit by a pitch last time up. You know, He's also flied out to right. There's two outs and I don't see now finally a reliever starts to get up. Popped up. Hernandez no play. Pinero spot is on deck. And. The bullpen just starting now to start warming up. I mean undoubtedly if Pinero spot comes up and you've got two runners on you've got to use Colby Rasmus. Well, it was shocking to us that he was not in the lineup tonight. Especially coming off and you mentioned the numbers that he had in the series and really on the homestand not bad at all. It's hard for me to understand why he's not playing on an everyday basis right now. Here's the 0 1 pitch. Thurston slowly hit towards short. Yanish has to be quick. He is. Time to stretch in game one of this three game series. 3 0 Cincinnati. Game recap is presented by Infinity. And it's all Homer Bailey as he'll lead it off in the bottom of the seventh. But boy, has he been good tonight. He has struck out five. He's hit a man, walked only one, and only two hits allowed. But again, I'll go back to the point you brought up, Al. Is the pitching, and not just about Bailey, is the pitching that much better tonight, or is the lineup making him that good? Yeah, and I would have been tempted to, do, to call this night quits and keep it a very, very yeah. positive outing. With everything he's been to and the expectations on him, the fact that he's been going back and forth from the triple A level to the big leagues. We're talking about an exceptional bullpen you right bring in to protect the lead for him but I would, I would think they'd have a very short leash on him from this point forward. There's Dickerson one for three with a double back in the first and a run scored hitting 289 on the year. On deck Tavares if anybody can reach then Votto. Pinheiro his pitch count. Very efficient here at 72. So no activity for the Cardinals in their bullpen and Joel is due up first for the Cardinals in the eighth at some point though you got to think about you know using your bullpen and sacrificing that spot in the lineup to get somebody on and generate offense. Well I don't I, there's no doubt uh, this is his final inning. It would be very hard to explain why you allow him to hit when he's trailing three nothing. Billy Hatcher made the play on that slow ground ball. The first base coach of the Cincinnati Reds. Mark Berry over at third. There's Billy Hatcher. Chris Spire is a bench coach for Dusty Baker inside that Cincinnati Reds dugout. Mike Stefanski, remember him? Yeah, he's full pink catcher. Used coach. to be with the Cardinals. Ooh, just missed on the inside corner two and two Dick Pohl when Dusty started managing he went to the Arizona Fall League he was given Dick Pohl as a pitching coach and he has been with him ever since Tony La Russa, Dave Duncan and Tony is up after this year but I guess because we've been through it Time and again with Tony LaRusso, where it's just not that much of a a burning question as to whether or not he will come back because people know the answer. As the catch is made, the answer would be, I'll evaluate at the end of the season. If they want me, then right. we have to take a look at it. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by ATT. Switch to the nation's fastest 3G network, ATT, your world delivered. Queen City, Cincinnati, Ohio. And I bring up the point because basically wherever Tony goes Dave Duncan goes. You'd have to wonder about some of the others that are on this staff that have been with the Cardinals even prior to Tony being here. Dave McKay the same way but you, you were telling me earlier that he's contemplating retiring after this year right. Yeah I've heard that. Mr. Barris fouls it one ball one strike. I know in talking with Dave he's very thankful to get the opportunity to be with Tony because Tony's been employed all these years 
and they've been in winning situations. And he's had a chance to coach at this level, which a lot of guys it takes forever to get to this level. Sure. You know, you get a lot of uh, players, ex-players, saying, you know, well, I'm going to take a couple years off, and then I'll then I'll try and get back into coaching. And a lot of times when you you know, out of sight, out of mind. Yeah. Very difficult once you step away from the game to get back into it. And these coaches today, it's not like the days when I was playing. You know, they really work. <laughs> Strikeout, and that's the first tonight for Pinheiro. Tells the umpire, nice job. We head to the eighth. This cap ready telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals story tonight. Big number 34 of the Cincinnati Reds Homer Bailey. As Bailey has been very effective and now Joel Pinheiro will be pinch hit for by Colby Rasmus and Pinheiro. In his way, very effective too. He gives up two runs, three total, but to two of those were earned, one unearned run. Right. And just very little offense for him recently, and he's in line for his tenth defeat. The Cardinals can't come from behind. At but some point, you've got to think that that's mentally got to beat you up a little bit. Well, that's what you really got to guard against. But you're absolutely right. It's it's human nature to sit there and put so much pressure on yourself to be perfect. Pinheiro threw 81 pitches as Rasmus lines it into the seats. One ball, one strike. On the bench tonight, Colby Rasmus, DeRosa, LaRue, Tyler Green, and Hot Power. I remember DeRosa can only play defense or pinch run. He's not able to hit yet. Here's a 1 1. Now you're kind of, uh, it's almost. Wondering, would you use Rasmus here, or would you wait and see if you could get into a situation where he could drive a ball? But it's getting so late, you may not have that opportunity. Exactly. Here's a 2-1 pitch. Pulled to the right side, past Phillips, and a base hit. So leadoff hit, and I'm sure right now Dusty Baker will keep a real watchful eye. On Homer Bailey and probably a quick hook for the various reasons that you gave Al but you go out on a strong note and uh, you've got a very good bullpen waiting uh, four game hitting streak now he's six for his last 12 he was five for 11 in the series now there's bullpen activity and I wouldn't wouldn't have surprised me if Dusty would have had somebody warming up for the first base runner to make a pitching change David sure. Weathers taking the jacket off. So here's Brendan Ryan. Fouled back in Ryan tonight is struck out. And also flied out to right over two. I've got to tell you the way managers today it's so much better for the relief court. Where old days you know you would have a seventh eighth and ninth you always got a lefty and righty up warming up all the time. Or now they try really not to have a guy warm up too much. If a guy gets up you know usually they're bringing him in. And always felt like the days that I warmed up two or three times, it did not. There pitch. goes Colby. And a fly ball into right. Warm up two or three times and not pitch. You know, that took a lot of a bigger toll than pitching. Just the warm ups in the bullpen. Colby Rasmus looking at the class of 2005 head to head. Of course, we saw Jay Bruce last year. And uh, he made his debut arrived on the scene with much fanfare and he was drafted 12th overall and Colby Rasmus 28th overall. Two fine looking players in a great draft class of 2005. Schumacher coming in with a base hit to start the game then was left stranded in the first he's grounded out to second and flied out to left. Shoots it foul, Duncan on deck. Trying to find some way to get pool holes up with runners on. 
And if that's the case, you won't see Homer Bailey out there. No. Even though he's pitched Albert extremely tough tonight. Pitch count at 100. Now 101. We're talking about their bullpen. The Cardinals bullpen is led by Ryan Franklin and he picked up another save last night. 19 saves for Franklin. He's tied with three others that have 19. How about the fact he's 2 and 0 and an ERA under 1. Right. And that's the big difference. Did he go? No. Trying to get out of the way of the pitch. You know, he wasn't swinging at it. And with Franklin out, opponents are hitting 170 against him. 31 innings, only five walks. His numbers are quite uh, quite good and uh, very comparable to some of the best in baseball right now. Three and one. Get the feeling this could be it for Homer Bailey. Well, the one thing you're not going to you're going to take him out to where he can only win this ball game. Doubtful that they would allow him to face. You know the. The tying run there so you take him out they had a lefty warming up with Weathers looked like a Herrera. A 3 1 pitch to skip Schumacher. Inside tying run comes to the plate in Duncan. On deck pools. You say who follows <laughs> Duncan. Only the second walk issued by Homer Bailey. He's got to make the move here doesn't he. Yes. And Dusty's out of the dugout and he'll make that move. Well, this sellout. Here at the Great American Ballpark will give him a standing ovation. Homer Bailey. They already are on their feet. Listen to this crowd as we head to break. Well, here's one of those guys we were talking about in their bullpen. Our Chevy called to the bullpen. Arthur Rhodes comes in for the Cincinnati Reds. Their bullpen as of late has been lights out. Shut out the opponent in 30 of his 34 appearances this year. Opponents hitting just 167. And he began the season with 15 scoreless appearances and 12 scoreless innings. So here we go with a big portion of this game right here in this eighth inning for the Cardinals. Don't hit into a double play. You know that's for sure. A major League debut for Jared Hoffpower. He drafted out of Southern Miss in the sixth round of the 04 draft. The reason he's here, he's batted 340 against left handers this year. Just coming off the minor league. Player of the Month honors for June: seven home runs, 20 RBIs, 327 average for Memphis. Like you say, you do not hit into a double play. You take a strikeout over that. How about the difference in experience here? Hoffbauer major league debut, and Rhodes has been around forever. Well, this is 749th appearance for Arthur Rhodes, tying Warren Spahn. 1-0 pitch. Outside two balls no strikes pool holes is on deck. Wouldn't that be something well, you just hope the kid can. Take a deep breath realize you know who the on deck hitter is. Somehow some way. We'll let him uh, hit a home run in his first bat to tie <laughs> this game but. Three and oh. Do you take two here. I say yes with pools <laughs> on deck. You know they always never want to take the hands out of the bat out of a young player but I understand your philosophy. Oh man. Don't you better if you swing at a pitch on three and oh you better be able to drive it out of the ballpark. You pop it up. Don't go back to the Cardinal dugout. You saw that bullpen ERA of three point two one for the Reds. And he walked up. He made his debut. Draws a walk, bases loaded for Pujols. Now, Dusty, do you bring in David Weathers? Goodness. Yeah, bring in. You got to bring in Weathers, and I like that matchup against Albert. No question.
Arthur Rhodes four pitches walks the rookie in his major league debut. Are you kidding me. Pujols comes up with the bases loaded against David Weathers nine for 18 with two home runs. He still hasn't made the move yet. Now he has Weathers coming in. He has been unbelievable in this spot in his career and certainly this year. 406 average, nine grand slams, tied for the most in Cardinal history. This season, five for six, three home runs, 16 RBIs. Game on the line right here, and David Weathers coming in to face pool holes. And we showed you the numbers, pool holes with terrific numbers against David Weathers. And this is where, if you don't have a closer that can give you multiple innings, you're forced to use him in a situation like this. Yep, you're right. And he also had out there Nick Massett, who has been very good lately. Yeah, I mean, David Weathers, uh, I was kidding him today, saying, you know, I didn't realize you were the pitching coach for the. With Cincinnati, he says, You don't know how many times people come up there and ask me if I'm <laughs> pitching coach. Bus driver would say, Hey, bus number two is back here. <laughs> First pitch to Pools. Taken for a strike. David Weathers before the game had his two sons out on the field. He does it before every single game. Plays catch with them, hits some fly balls, pitches batting practice, practice to him. They come with him on the road as well. This is a career appearance number 928 for Weathers. The 0 1. Taken high, one ball, one strike. Pujols tonight struck out back in the first when he tried to call time with Homer Bailey on the mound and did not get that uh, time call. It was a little check swing and a strike. Then he lined out. Good play by Hairston in the fourth inning at third base, and then he hit a high fly ball into center field back in the sixth. What you pay for to see this matchup. And David Weathers is going to go out there and battle. He's been a, an excellent pitcher over the years. The 1 1 pitch taken outside. A crowd tonight of 41,349. The fifth sellout for the Reds this season. They're on the edge of their seats right now. The game's best hitter at the plate in pool holes against David Weathers. This is all you can ask for is to have an opportunity late in the ball game that you can. Get back in it or win it. The 2 1 pitch. And Albert gets it to foul and out of play. 2 and 2. Hey, Weathers. I love how Larry Walker was saying this about any opposing pitcher how they slowly walk up the mound, slowly toe the rubber, head down, thinking about how am I going to pitch to Albert Pools. On their feet. Somebody said it best recently that if you pray, you start praying with Albert there. If you don't pray, you start thinking about it. <laughs> Set up inside. Uh, Weathers didn't like that as he's calling his catcher out as he had second thoughts about the selection he agreed upon. You better be 100% right on with what you're doing. To me, you're just asking for trouble by trying to pitch inside. You know, David is a great competitor. But I mean when he doesn't have the stuff that he can throw it by him as Homer Bailey can only sit back and hope his bullpen does the job for him. Again pools nine for 18 in his career against Weathers two home runs five RBIs. Popped up. Will it find the seats. Out of play. Ooh, Who's going to be close. <laughs> That ball kind of hung up there for him, but Albert got up underneath it. Tell you what, that was a pretty good pitch to hit, too. Yes, it play. was. It got away with the pitch up. And to me, one of the things about Albert, he's the best in the game right now at putting a level swing on a pitch up in the zone. Even one of his eyes, he can hit it for a line drive. Isn't this what it's all about, Albert? Yeah, Al? exactly I mean, this right. Is as good as it gets in baseball. This is what you pay for to see a matchup late in the game. You see the game's best. And this is what David Weathers, you know what I mean? David's going to go out there and say, hey, I've got a chance to beat the best. 2-2, two, two, Pujols, left center. Is it going to go? Grand slam! Grand slam! Albert Pujols, his 10th all-time. And the Cardinals lead it on Pujols' 
Grand Slam hits 4-3. Dan, that is a new career, a new record for the Cardinals. Ten career Grand Slams, the most in their history. Smujo had nine, and it's the first time that someone has had four Grand Slams in one season. That broke bottom lead. Tatis and Keith Hernandez set up a way ball up out over the middle of the plate and he knew he had it look at Tony La Russa. this was right before the pitch I hope <laughs> well that's him after oh no emotion showed no at all emotion. yeah well you got you got to finish the game you know you're in the on the believable inning little chopper to second base Dusty Baker, we had a quick shot of him, head down. His reaction. Uh oh. No, no, no. Oh, heartache. Well, that's, that's surprising that you don't see more reaction from Dusty, but, you know, he wears his emotions on his sleeves, and Albert, I think, just couldn't believe it himself. You go back to maybe the key at bat in the inning, the walk to Hoff Power. No doubt about it. To load him up for Albert Pools. Ten grand slams in his career. He does it again. 4 3 St. Louis. The remarkable Albert Pools has done it again. His 10th grand slam in his career. And uh, let's go pitch by pitch, presented by Chevrolet. Little off speed pitch out there gets a strike. Then he misses with a fastball. Up away. Pitching away, consistently going away. There's a little slider. He fouls it to the right side. There's the hanger that he pops up that just goes into Camberwell. And then the fastball up out over the plate. They wanted it down and away. And Dusty now can second guess himself. Now here is something as crazy as it sounds as Josh Kenny is into the ball game for St. Louis as Pujols hits the grand slam but I, I think now if you're an opposing manager and I realize this sounds crazy you almost have to think about even walking Pujols in that situation. I, I know it sounds crazy but that that is something that a lot of people right now watching this game and this is our Chevy call to the bullpen are saying are you better off Walking Albert Pujols in that spot and walking in a run. I, I know exactly what you're saying. I had a conversation with Dick Pohl, the Reds pitching coach today. And there's a line drive into right field and it drops in for a base hit in front of Ludwig. Good play to keep it in front. Absolutely. Makes a great effort to try and catch it, but does the most important thing, and that's keep it in front of him and hold it just to a single. You see him come charging high in here. He's trying to get down, but looking to use both hands, uses the body, and keeps the ball in front of him to hold it to a single. But Dick Pohl is saying that, you know, why and how could people keep on letting Albert Pujols beat you? And he said, you know, he said, look at out. We've been around long enough. We've seen guys that you know they're pitching around, but it puts so much pressure on a guy that they miss location. And, I, and it reminded me of Aaron Horan in the game that. Albert beat him with a two run home run in the first a home run or, or double an RBI later on in the game Carpenter makes one bad pitch and that was a home run to Knicks but if, if he would have pitched around and they tried to pitch around him and the veteran harangue made two mistakes you know Carpenter loses that game one to nothing yep. on the home run that's right so his point is is, is put even guys that are trying they put so much pressure on themselves that they make bad location. We both found it interesting that Josh Kenny gets the call in this spot and not Jason Mott. Now, not asking, uh, having the opportunity to ask Tony right now, I think one thing that you and I picked up is that the last couple of times that Kenny has been out there, his slider has been sharper. It's been getting better, game by game, appearance by appearance. I know I'm visiting with Marty Mason, Cardinals bullpen coach. You know, he feels it's getting better too. Well, I think it is too, but I kind of question, I wonder why Trevor Miller didn't come in, start the end. Sure. Two or three batters are left handed, and he's held left handed batters to a 120 average. A 2 0 pitch. 
Be careful here with Phillips. If you That's hang right. that slider, he can lose it. And there was a slider that's up. Kenny, a lot of times, you know, it's it is improving, but he's been getting underneath that slider. It doesn't have the. It kind of flattens out. It stays in one plane and becomes a more hittable. Reyes is the left-hander that is up. And will we see Franklin with another opportunity for a more than one uh, one inning? There's the slider in there for his strike. Kind of backed up that yeah, time. Yeah, it, did, it didn't move down and away. It just, like you say, a backup slider. Those are usually pretty good pitches, especially when pit, hitters don't swing at them. Good point. <laughs> now, here's the thing with Franklin. You could use him multiple innings, but the problem is this would be his third outing in a row, three days in a row. I understand that, too, but if I get a chance to win a game, I'm using 2-2 two -two pitch. Phillips ground ball base hit. This is the kind of game too, Al, where it's been it's been gut wrenching at times because the offense hasn't been there. You know your one chance to score is when Pujols is up. You do do not want to lose this game. There's a little slider, but it's in the middle of the plate and bounced through. So Kenny's come in here and two base hits. They've got to bring in Reyes now with the left-hander Bruce coming up. So runners at first and second, and that'll be it for Josh Kenny with nobody out. Tony La Russa, the long walk out. And that's it for the right-hander. Jay Bruce up when we come back. Cardinals baseball on Fox Sports Midwest is brought to you by Budweiser Select. Full flavor, 99 calories, the exception to the rule. And by Bank of America, Cardinals banking only at Bank of America. At least at this point now you could question both managers with some of the decisions here with their bullpens. Let's now, start with Dusty Baker Weathers you know the numbers 9 18 for pools against him and Kenny coming in to start the eighth. Yeah and and you know kind of question that when he was coming in from the bullpen. You know here you know why I question why you didn't have Miller to start the inning. Not knowing uh, if there's anything that we're not aware of with Trevor Miller. Dennis Reyes pitched last night. Lefties are batting 208 against him. Lefties are batting 120 against Miller. He hadn't pitched since Tuesday. Showing Bunt here. Bunts it in the air and Thurston plays it. Doesn't let it roll foul. Didn't want to take that chance. And now it's uh, second and third with one out for Cincinnati. Denny's Reyes, of course, pitched here in Cincinnati back in 99, 2001. Bruce, so interesting that you'd have Jay Bruce Bunny in that spot. Well, he, you know, he's got 18 home runs, but a really low batting average and gets the job done. And now Molina will go out and talk to Reyes. And that just stalled to us. Tony will make a pitching change. Curious to see who he brings in. Now it's Jason Mott. Jason Mott. We thought Mott might be the one that would start this inning. Needs a strikeout in the worst way when we come back. Career home run number 350 for Albert Pujols winds up being his 10th grand slam of his career. And our Hardy's prime cut of the game. You don't see that kind of reaction from Albert very well, often. you don't. It's 81 RBIs now for Albert. 81 RBIs, 31 home runs, and Jason Mott's got his hands full. Well, he's. Uh, Recorded 24 strikeouts in 29 and a third innings. He needs a strikeout here. He gets Ramon Hernandez. And this calls time as can't strike anybody out till you get two strikes. So thinking of a pop up in the infield, and when you get two strikes, you're thinking about that big strikeout. And a fastball at 97 from Mike. This is when you come in here and you have a lot of fun. 
You either do it, you don't do it. Tough way, you know, to protect a one run lead with one out and runners at second and third. He's been very good at straining those runners, too. Liner, center field. This will tie the game up. Rasmus's throw goes into third base. Safe there. It tied up. 4 4. That run charged to Kenny. Fastball, bell tie, and hit out there. For a sacrifice fly. It looked like Thurston, if he held on to the ball, did he drop that ball? At third base, he would have been out. Yeah. 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 Jerry Hairston Jr., three for three. A double, two singles, and an RBI. Look at the defense. Now they're going to see. Okay. That explains the defense. As Schumacher. That would have been the oddest defense yeah. in the history of baseball. See if he left too soon. Brendan Ryan was at the second base bag, and Schumacher was directly behind him on the outfield grass. So, what kind of defense is this? But the step off and they checked, and Jim Wolf, the second base umpire, said he didn't leave too soon. Fastball taken upstairs by Hairston. It's a tough way to get a blown save, isn't it? Oh, man. Well, Dusty Baker, when you think about walking a hitter with the bases loaded, he saw it done with bots. If anybody should know, it's Dusty Baker. The problem is, Dan, you know how rare it is to hit a grand slam? <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. The only thing I can say, you know how rare it is to see a guy like this play? And and you know how rare, and I mean, we go to every town and we just sit there and start talking with other people and just go, how can people keep on pitching to it? That's right. And we love it when they do, but it just doesn't make sense for us because we're seeing what we see on a daily basis and how good he is. Essentially, you know, the great month of June was done when the Cardinals played poorly and you start breaking down why they pitched to him was when the game was out of reach. So he would get pitches but, to hit. But and you, at this point, the bases were loaded, so they know, felt they had to pitch to him. Of his 14 home runs, 11 of them, you know, either tied the game or gave the Cardinals a lead. Amazing. Hairston jammed and fouls it back. You think he doesn't enjoy coming up with it? The drama and the theater is there. I mean, you've got to want the good RBI guys want to dream for those opportunities. They want to be there to be the man. It's scary to think where this organization would be without Albert Pools. 2 2. Strike out of Mott. Harrison flips the bat. 4 4. As we head to the night. Tied at four as we go to the ninth in Cincinnati. Don't forget coming up after the game on the post game edition of U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live. Pat Paris, Jack Clark standing by. They'll take a look at tonight's pitching matchup. Jack the Ripper on Manny's return. Plus we'll have player reaction straight from the Cardinal clubhouse. I'm sure we'll take a few more looks at Albert Pujols handiwork as well. It's all coming up after the game. For now, we go back to Dan and Al. Gentlemen. Okay, Jim, thanks. It's 4-4. Uh, four, four. Head to the ninth inning. Tony La Russa, Dusty Baker, the Cardinals, and the Reds. What a way to start this series. What a way to start this road trip for St. Louis. Cardinals have four base hits and one big swing of the bat. Here's Nick Massett. 27th appearance and this is the guy that I was talking about before I was a little surprised that Dusty Baker would go with Weathers in that spot to face pools and not with Massett. Well Massett's uh, held the opponents to a 140 average. I think that's what kind of uh, tell you what you're thinking of. The other thing that plays a part in it too, the history that Weathers had with Albert. Yes. Albert now 10 for 19 with three home runs. 
with Tom Brenneman. He said he was with the Diamondbacks when Buck Showalter walked Barry Bonds with the bases loaded. Right, and that's what we were talking about earlier. You know, so Dusty has seen it. And I was telling him about playing in Mexico where as I draw a blank, I can't think of the, uh, the hitter, and I'll think of him in a minute, but the greatest home run hitter in Mexican history, also he's you know an all-time hits leader, Hector Espino. And Deacon Jones was managing the team against Hector Espino and had a two-run lead with the bases loaded. And he walked Hector Espino. That the strategy was foiled as the next guy hit a double. They fired, they fired uh, the, the manager, Deacon Jones, but double whammy because they retain him as the hitting coach. <laughs> so in the Mexican league. You have to wonder if right now we are seeing what could be the greatest career in the history of baseball before it's all said and done in Albert Pujols. He's the first player in Major League history to have 30 home runs. Uh -oh. Knocked down by Massett. Steps and throws and takes the hit away from Yadier Molina. See if it, it, he's acting like that got some some flesh. I'm not saying he's okay. Got him on the, the pitching arm right above the elbow. He spent some time on the disabled list earlier this year. Just a line drive as momentum mm. carries him to first base side. That right side of his body was exposed, and it ball was just hit extremely hard right up right below the shoulder and right around the bicep that'll tighten up very quickly yep. so your heartbeat just took a, a pounding too it's one of those balls if he saw it it's hit so sharply and you couldn't react to it couldn't even think about getting your glove up there I'm sure they're not going to take any chances here. It doesn't look like it. They may be going to the bullpen. He hasn't shown any desire to want to go throw a ball. That will be it. So they have three righties down there. Also Daniel Ray Herrera. And that's Herrera coming out of the bullpen. He throws a screwball. We'll talk about that when we come back. It's 4-4 in the top of the ninth. Four four, and let's take a look at our player of the game presented by Budweiser. Albert Pujols' fourth Grand Slam this season. One out, nobody on, and Daniel Ray Herrera is into the ball game. Here's a lefty that we're talking about the other night, Al, that doesn't throw all that hard, isn't all that tall, and throws a screwball. Okay, so he's 24. He's 5'6", 165, but. Pretty good numbers ERA under two he's been very good at straining inherited runners nobody on base right now but that screwball is usually a pitch that makes it very effective against right handed batters and sometimes the lefties he you know it's taken away from him. and the first pitch is a strike to Joe Thurston he's got the slider that will go away from the left handed batters the screwball comes in to the lefty away from a right hander and an 0 1 pitch to Joe taken outside the 1 1 hit in the air and popped up the catcher wants it makes the catch on the third base line and there's two away. Be Rasmus who pinch hit in the eighth inning, lead off the eighth with a base hit, and came around on the grand slam, stayed in the game, and get his shot against this little lefty. So Colby Rasmus did not start tonight. Came off the bench and singled back in the eighth inning. There's a sweeping breaking ball in there for a strike. Yeah, usually when you have Albert do what he did, you know. 10th Grand Slam, fourth one this season. You're supposed to win these games. They did, did give him a lead after 
very quiet seven innings. Another breaking ball that's 65 miles an hour taken outside. One ball, one strike, two outs, and nobody on. Colby Rasmus with the walk off home run winner the other night was sitting on that breaking ball and pulled it foul. Left it on the inner part of the plate. Okay, this is what I use and this is how I do it. See this black bat? And you see these balls? Pitch after pitch, I hit them over the fence. Carpenter saying, how are you doing that? He is amazing. Rasmus goes down to get the pitch and hits it into right field. How is he not starting? He's two for two tonight. Now here's a question if you're Brendan Ryan do you give him a pitch or two to try to read this lefty to steal a base and get in scoring position. I don't because he hasn't really shown you any desire to want him to run. Now the one thing here you've got you a guy that throws a screwball one of the ways you know you've got to hit to the opposite field. It's going to be pitched away right there so you got the first baseman holding Rasmus on big lead but it was a one way lead back to the bag. So two outs and a runner at first base and a lefty Herrera in now to face Brendan Ryan put the run and hit on protect Kobe a little bit he's leaning and his first move was back right, to the bag. That's, that's what I meant by it's a one way lead. Sure. It's, you know leaning out there but no intentions and we've seen most of the time when Kobe's out there a lot of times his first step is always back to first base playing a little bit too cautious. One of the reasons I would say that maybe he would run is that he doesn't throw hard if you get a good jump he throws that screwball at 65 miles an hour have a pretty good chance of swiping the bag. No I agree with you but you know if you don't get a good jump out there you can't go and I rarely see him with a good jump. Here's a 1 0 pitch and a base hit out to left. The go ahead run now in scoring position in Rasmus skip Schumacher the hitter. Spent a lot of time worrying about about Kobe out there and it hangs a pitch to Brendan Ryan and he gets his first base hit. Remember as Schumacher let off this game with a single and then you had to go all the way to the seventh inning with two outs in the seventh inning before Molina got the second hit for the Cardinals. First pitch to Schumacher taken outside. This is the last lefty that they have in their bullpen. Right. You see with runners in scoring position the Cardinals one for five. Skip against lefties this year hitting 224. It was 195 or so last season so an improvement as he's seen a lot more. And. Kobe got a hanging breaking ball that he was able to pull but. And Ferrer throws where his breaking ball where he wants it. Outside. But falling behind 3 and 0. Oh. And on deck it's the rookie pop power. And Carlos Fisher. Is. Warming up. Right hander. And that's a strike. See if he wants to take another pitch here on three and one. Good speed out at second base and Colby Rasmus. Strike two. Now if you're Herrera you haven't been able to really locate that breaking ball do you go with it here on three and two. A lot of times you do. You, runners are going to be going, and I think that's his best pitch. So it's a pitch I would think he would, would throw here. 
Ryan at first, Rasmus at second. Skip hits it to short. Bobble, throw to first, everybody safe. He didn't even throw it. Bases loaded for the rookie. Got that in between hop. Giannis in a real tough play. 3 2, just kind of protected the ball down, got underneath it a little bit, and Giannis couldn't get a, a hop that he liked and can't connect. May have had a little English on it yep, too off the sure end of the did. bat. And so Hop Power will be the hitter with the bases loaded. Scored a base hit. Pretty generous. Hop Power could be a hero. First pitch foul back. Didn't swing the bat first time up. Well, he did a good job in walking. And remember, he hit 340 against left-handers there in uh, in Memphis. Kind of an odd guy to bring to your ball club for a Tony La Russa club because he can only play second base. It's the only position he can play. And it's now ruled an air on that play. Hop power, base hit in the left. Cardinals lead it. Brendan Ryan coming in, and he will score. Hop power, Major League debut, delivers. The two key at bats. The walk ahead of Albert Grand Slam, and then now his first Major League hit, driving in two. Welcome to the ball club. Cardinals minor league player of the month of June and he's just delivered his first major league hit and could be a game winner. A little screwball and he goes out there and hooks it. And with a good speed Brendan Ryan scores his second run. Out comes Dusty Baker. The weight of the world on Paul Yanish's shoulders right now the shortstop that committed the air to extend the inning. And the Cardinals have themselves a 6-4 lead. What a ball game here. So many stories in this game from Pinheiro to Pools to Hop Power. Encarnacion going out to play third base. Cardinals lead it 6-4 here in the night. Oh, by the way, look who's up again as Jared Hoppauer delivers the bases loaded single to score two. And here is Pujols. Well, they pitch to him again. Third base is open. That's one of the questions now for Dusty Baker, no doubt. Well, and Fisher has allowed a run in five of his last nine appearances. 13 games overall, 1-0, and ERA at 3.38. See, 18 strikeouts and 11 Base on balls in 16 innings. So promoted from Louisville, where he was 2 0 with two saves, ERA at two, and held opponents to 175 average. But this is Albert Pools. I know your decision right now is intentionally walking. See you later. <laughs> Take my luck with the next guy. Take my chances. Two outs and two on. Two run lead for the Cardinals. Albert Pujols, if you're just joining us off of David Weathers, hit a grand slam back in the eighth, put the Cardinals on top four to three. They were trailing three to nothing at that point. Reds came back with a run of their own. The Cardinals have scored two here in the top of the ninth. 1-0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Encarnacion is the new third baseman, so part of the double switch for Dusty Baker, and he'll be due up second. And in the ninth spot in the lineup, the pitchers in the seventh spot. Two zero pitch. Two and one. Well, this is a game where one of these managers was really not going to sleep well. Either way, with the emotions of this game. Yeah. What if? What if I would have brought in Massett when I brought in Weathers? What if? Rhodes didn't walk Hoff power to bring up Albert with the bases loaded. A 2-1 pitch. Grounded, fair. 
And Albert has at least one more RBI. Into the corner it goes. Hoffbauer held up at third base. Pujols with the double. He's got five RBIs tonight. Now 82 this season. Tough chance for Encarnacion here. Well, he just came off the disabled. It's well off the line. And then it takes a bad hop over it as he's diving for it. And then the ball takes a bad hop over his shoulder. It's a nice play there by Dickerson to cut it off because yeah. Hoffauer was flying towards third. Here's Ludwig. Runners at second and third base. Now they're going to intentionally pass Ludwig. Fans are saying, why didn't you do this when <laughs> Pools was up? Cardinals will send their ninth man to the plate. You see, they're booing now because of what you're talking about. This pitcher spot is on deck. There you see Tyler Green going to the bat rack. And you knew that. Still a save situation at this point. I think right now you got to give it to Franklin no matter what. A game like this, you got a chance to win it, win it. So Tyler Green will be the hitter. Remember, as a pinch hitter, he homered in this ballpark. First time we came through. Couldn't get base runners in the first seven innings, and now they had them all over the bases. And it's upstairs to Green. Take a look at the first game of this road trip, and obviously, this is huge if the Cardinals can pick up the first here tonight, knowing that Carpenter goes on Sunday. You always feel good when he's on the mound. It's about winning series. Well, Milwaukee lost today. The Cardinals moved into sole possession of first place in the Central before the game started. And, you know, with since he having the emotional win yesterday, a walk off hit by Votto, you, know, you turn that momentum around, and the Cardinals look like they were just going to be shut out in this game. And then all of a sudden, they've scored seven runs in the last two innings and a chance for more. Bases loaded again for the Cardinals, third time tonight. Two and one is the count on Green, seven to four St. Louis. Albert Pujols with five RBIs. Right on the pitch. So Pujols has put up ridiculous numbers. 15th career five plus RBI game. Five, 15 times he's done that. Five plus RBIs in a game. Now, and that's this is his ninth season. Only man in history to have at least 30 home runs and every single year is nine years in the big leagues. Now the count runs full here with the bases loaded. Like we said before, Al, we're, we're watching arguably a guy that's putting together one of the greatest careers, if not the greatest career ever in baseball. And it's not far fetched to say it, is it? No, not at all. Here's Ryan Franklin at 7 to 4, St. Louis leading Cincinnati, bottom of the night. And Ryan Franklin, this will be the third night in a row we've seen him come in. And he has just been terrific this year. Record of 2 0, picked up the win. The walk-off game that uh, Rasmus hit that home run, and the saves have been up there with amongst the uh, league leaders. He's got 19 on the season. Heath Bell of San Diego with 22. Brian Wilson with 21. K. Rod with 19, along with Brian Franklin. Well, he leads the major league relievers with that 0.87 ERA, unscored upon in his last nine games, and that covers 13 innings. Hopefully, 
closes this out and gets rewarded with an all-star berth. That would be something awfully special for Brian Franklin. Here's Lance Nix. Just killed the Cardinals earlier this year. Nix, who is 8 for 24 against the Cardinals in the seven previous games. Three home runs and nine RBIs. First pitch is taken for a strike, a late call on the inside corner. Needs the Reds pinch hitters with five hits and 19 at bats. 250 on the year with seven home runs, 21 RBIs. And Nix pulls one foul. That's what you like about Franklin, he throws strikes. You know, the one of the most important stats for a reliever is what do you do with the first man? And not quite as important as it used to be because most of the time relievers start innings, but he's retired 26 of the first 29 batters he's faced. 0 oh 2 the count. Seven games, eight for 24, three home runs, nine RBIs against the Cardinals. Cardinals have been out hit. 10 to 8, but they lead it 7 to 4. Here's the 0-2 pitch from Franklin. Swing and a miss. And Molina will throw it to first base. Pujols covering for the all-important first out. That's the thing that makes him very good in this role. And we've talked about it a lot, but a Lance Nix comes in, hits from the left side, and Franklin can get lefties out the righties out it just doesn't matter and he does it efficiently he does it so efficiently that you use you get pretty good defense behind him but nobody really seems like they center the ball against him but the defense knows he's always throwing strikes so they're on their toes they're ready the drama is already there because you know he's a closer it's in a safe situation and usually your defense is so much better Encarnacion looks at a ball a little bit low so here he is back in some believe Maybe back too early. Chip fracture of his left wrist. And prior to going on the disabled list, he was 0 for his last 12 and 1 for his last 28. That's a strike. First pitch looked pretty good, too. Yeah, you're, you're almost like, you know, a little hesitant to swing the bat when you're guarding against a hand injury. Here's a 1 1 pitch. Did go on a rehab and appeared in 11 games for Louisville. Hit 270, two home runs, eight RBIs. On the year, 127, one home run, six RBIs. So one ball, two strikes. What does he throw? The slider. One out, nobody on. Here comes a one-two pitch by Franklin. Swung on and hit out to deep left. He looked comfortable there. In this location and paid for it. Schumacher will dig it out underneath that scoreboard out there in left field. One out double. On the slider that's going to be down and away. And looked like the ball didn't do anything, but just kind of sat in the middle of the plate. Yeah, so you see Molina, and you see Lucas really didn't do anything and hit hard. So. Incarnacion is back. Molina out to visit. In Cincinnati, Ryan Franklin back in 06 prior to signing with the Cardinals was 5-2 with the Reds. Right. He went to, went to Philadelphia later that season, right? Philadelphia, Cincinnati, oh, okay. they the same the other way. Yep. And that's what. Remember last time we were here was Micah Owings hit that uh, home run off of Franklin on a Sunday afternoon. But he can atone for that right here. I'm sure the people that follow baseball day in and day out with the Reds are thinking, how did this happen? How has Franklin become such a good pitcher? <laughs> right. This is now his 174th appearance wearing the Cardinal uniform. All one pitch. Oh and two. See, that's that fastball. He's got a little extra to it that still can get guys out. Yeah, and, and 
it spots it well, but it's got a little running movement on it. The only time we've ever seen him really falter was, you know, when he's overworked late in the season. But when he has his rest. Here's a ground ball. Hit to the right side. Pop power makes the play. What gets lost in this game because of the pool holes grand slam outside of that at bat. Two of the biggest bats tonight from a guy making his major league debut. He walks against Arthur Rhodes and then comes up with the bases loaded and delivers a single. Doubt about it. You know, he's open your eyes with uh, those two at bats. It's the kind of game that's devastating if you're Cincinnati if you can't come back and win. And it's a huge win for the Cardinals. Yeah, I mean, this game was a Cincinnati victory all over it, but. Tony's motto play a hard nine and it's paid off this in this game. Still the final out to Hamas and Dustin talking to himself and he'll be muttering about this one tonight. Tavares takes a pitch inside. One thing about Franklin is that excellent control. Rare, rarely is he pitched behind in the count, and if he falls behind, it's you know it's, it's rare that he's going to walk anybody. And that's a strike. Tavares just trying to go up there, trying to somehow, some way. Step off to oh, the splitter then. Oh, good pitch. Yes, he Ooh. was. The Cardinals may have caught a break. I think they did too. Brian Onora, the third base umpire, said he goes around on this splitter. And that replay, it looks like he did. From up, up top, it didn't. Yeah, I agree. So, what's he want to come with here on one and two? Wasted fastball, you know, up and away as he throw that splitter again. He's in the driver's seat. There's the splitter. Don't be afraid to bounce it, Molina saying. It's a pretty good hitter here, though. You know, not afraid to hit. You know, like all good hitters, not afraid to hit with two strikes. Usually they're good low ball hitters. I was watching them in bang practice. Very good at quick hands, taking the inside pitch and hitting it hard. Now they're going to, this is where I was thinking about fastball up and away. Kind of see if he'll chase a fastball up. He does it. Two and two. The runner from first takes the bag, the open bag at second. Two and two the count. Throw that fastball, see if they go back to the splitter. Very reluctant, I'm sure, to throw a slider on the inner part of the plate. Everything's got to be back door. Fastball away. Motto calls time. Third ball away. 2-2. Two, two. Oh, change, change with the runner at second, but he pointed to him and I was wasn't sure what that was about. Was they changed the signals? Phillips on and the count is three and two. What a game, huh? Terrific. The splitter. Just waiting for that mistake. Look at those numbers with a full count on Votto. League average at 234, and he's got tremendous numbers. Rusty Baker before the game tell me what a special person that Joey Votto is. He's their number three hitter, like Albert is the Cardinals' number three hitter. Their best hitter. 
runners at second and third. How good are you, Ryan Franklin? Inside. Here it Back comes. away. Yes, he did. did See he the goal? No. <laughs> well, I'm ball four. I bet that's a, if you show a replay, there's no difference in the one before. That one it looked like he did go around. So base is loaded. See that replay? It always looks like they go around. And it wasn't as pronounced as the one earlier, so maybe Brian Moore got them both right. How rare do you see Franklin walk two batters? Yeah. Now their chance to win it with a grand slam. Third day in a row for Franklin in. This time he's throwing a lot of pitches. Have to assume he's not available tomorrow, but nobody's worried about tomorrow right now. They're trying to finish this game off. Bases loaded. Phillips. You wonder if Franklin, at this point, Al, third night in a row, is starting to wear down just a little bit. That has to be a cause of concern. He's thrown 27 pitches now. 27. Well, that's what I'm saying. This is, he obviously will have tomorrow off. Mott or somebody else, maybe one of the lefties will get a chance to save a game. Strike two. On this date in Reds history, 2007, Brandon Phillips homered and drove in four, leading to the Reds past the Giants, 7 to 3 at the Great American Ballpark. Dusty would settle for four RBIs with one swing of the bat. 0-2. So Ryan Franklin right where he wants to be. Ahead in the count. Yeah. Giving that low target. Uh, trying to get him to expand the zone and started to swing, but held it. Phillips with a couple of base hits tonight and a run scored. Let's hope that fireworks is really just the fireworks after the game. One two pitch. He got him and the Cardinals win it. Seven to four the final. What a win for the St. Louis Cardinals. Five RBIs tonight for Albert Pujols including his 10th career grand slam and the Cardinals win it seven to four. They take a sure victory away from the Reds with the dramatics of Albert Pujols grand slam hop power gets his first major league hit and it's a game winner and Brian Franklin picks up his 20th save. Huge win for the Cardinals seven to four the final and the post game show is coming up next. Key hit in the game no doubt the grand slam off of David Weathers. Put the Cardinals on top. Franklin to save and the Cardinals win it. Game is over with a Cardinal win in Cincinnati. Jack the Ripper, Jack Clark and I are here to break it all down. Uh, Jack, exactly like Tony La Russa drew it up when he made up the lineup cards this afternoon. Well, he hopes so because he didn't draw it up again like that. So I don't think it's quite the way he, he thought it was going to go, but he'll take it when he got Albert Pujols. Dramatic things happen in a big way, and, and he pulled it off tonight. Yeah, we'll talk much more about that coming up. Plus, the Cardinals take to the road for the final 10 games of the first half, all against division opponents. Where will they stand 10 days from now? And 1890s train robber Joel Pinheiro on the hill in Cincy. Could the card starters go to 3 0 with the mustaches? And we'll take you back to Great American Ballpark to play a reaction. Tony LaRusso's thoughts as well. Plus, Jack Clark on the return of Manny Ramirez. Happy birthday, Tom Cruise. Show me the post-game show. It's U.S. Cellular Cardinals Live, and it's next.